Hey what's up, it's cute what if this side. Today we will be seeing, what if Deku saw future. Now before we move ahead with the fic, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For future what ifs like this. It was a warm, sunny day in Misutafu, and excited energy was rampant throughout UA. Hi. The students were coming down from the high of their recently conducted sports festival. Class 1A was no exception to this, and the upcoming internships were not dampening their spirits one bit. You could see Kaminari trying, and failing, to flirt with Gyro, the girl with the earphone jack. Quirk smiling exasperatedly at her friend's antics. Bakugu was scowling extra hard at anything and everything that moved. He was still upset about the results of the sports festival. He didn't get to crush Deku, and that half-and-half -half bastard not using his left side's power against him left a foul taste in his mouth. Ashido and Kirishima were planning a study session as horn buddies and getting tips from Midoriya. Speaking of which, the green-haired cinnamon roll of class. Wana was getting flustered by being in such close proximity with a girl. Yuraka was chuckling at her best friend's behavior. Ada was unusually quiet, but that was understandable given the news of his brother's encounter with the hero killer, Stain. Mina was busy scrolling through his phone, and no one dared to sneak a peek, thoroughly put off by the sheer perversity rolling off of him. Others such as Yeyurazu were trying to get some studying in before the class began, and Todoroki had a faraway look on his face, probably contemplating all the emotions and the moral conundrums his fight with Midoriya had brought up. Throughout this, though, he couldn't help but feel gratitude towards the shy boy, with an earth-shaking quirk. Yeah, sure you're not All Might, son, I've only felt that power twice, and I doubt any other quirk can do that. The half-hot half-cold user smirked to himself. A few minutes before the period bell was supposed to ring, everyone felt more than they saw a large flash of lightning. But not hearing any alarms go off, they eased up a bit. The absence of their teacher, Shota Aizawa, who was renowned for his punctuality, rationality and strictness, well after the bell had rung, was making some of the class worry. Ada was almost tempted to rush out of class and find his teacher. He mentally resisted chopping his hands while thinking this. Bakugu decided a nap was better than glaring at the wall, and Midoriya began a mumble fest that creeped those around him while trying to figure out the teacher's tardiness. Kaminari decided that stating the obvious was necessary. Yo guys, what do you think is holding Mr. Aizawa back? Do you think they needed to call him up for some emergency hero work? Kirishima looked at his yellow-haired friend and said back, Nah bro, I don't think he would be called up for such a mission so soon. After all, his injuries haven't been completely healed yet. I heard he was still in mummy mode while commentating the festival. What do you think, class rep? Ada was broken out of his self-induced stupor by his classmate's words. To be honest I haven't given this much thought. Though he might just be checking up something with the principal or recovery girl, thus explaining his delay. Ada replied. Midoriya was still worried about the pressure he felt when the lightning was heard. It had a different sort of weight to it. Shoji noticed his expression and asked, Midoriya, you felt the difference too, didn't you? Yuraka perked up at this, what difference? What is he talking about, Deku? That lightning, it didn't feel right, something was off. It felt more quirk-induced than natural. Midoriya replied. Yeah, even the color was a bit off the regular spectrum range of lightning. The sudden voice of Toru Hagakure startled everyone. They looked in her direction to see a set of floating clothes waving at them. Yeah, I know I'm not as smart as most of the people in the class but I definitely know a bit about the electromagnetic spectrum, seeing as that's how my quirk works after all. She said with a characteristic bubbliness to her voice. Before this conversation could go any further, the doors opening to show slightly irked Aizawa enter the class. Seeing his mood, no one wanted to ask about his lateness, but they didn't need to, because as soon as he reached his usual speaking spot he pointed towards the door and spoke with the irritation that was clearly visible on his face, projected into his usual monotone. Everyone, I need you to go to the auditorium, do it discreetly, we don't need the entire school to know. Also, make it quick, we don't have a lot of time to lose, and this may take a while. While the entire class was puzzled by their usually calm and collected teacher's behavior, they followed his instructions as quickly as they could, not wanting to irk their teacher even further. Even Bakugu was quiet the entire way. On the way there, they saw All Might, carrying an old man in a white and gold hero costume enter the building, though without the boisterous aura he was known to carry. It must be really serious for him to forego his usual greeting, the one for all user thought to himself. On entering the auditorium, the first thing they noticed was a cloaked individual standing next to Principal Nezu. She was talking in hushed tones with the old man who had come with All Might, who was still in his buff form, and, surprisingly, his hero costume. This was strange to Midoriya, as his mentor rarely donned his costume unless he had to. He also saw the student from general studies he had fought, Hitoshi Shinsu, and the girl from support course, Mei Hatsum. On seeing Midoriya and Ida, she skipped over to them and got into his personal space, all while talking a mile a minute, without stopping a response. Alongside them were the UA. Staff, Ectoplasm, Power Loader, Hound Dog, Midnight, Present Mike, Snipe, Cementos, Vlad King, Recovery Girl and 13, 
who had recovered from the ordeals of the USJ. Another group of heroes were present that were dressed up as cats, which Izuku identified as the wild wild pussycats. To everyone's surprise, Midoriya's discomfort and Todoroki's disgust, Endeavor was present here too. He had an unusual concern look that was mixed with a tinge of shame. This intrigued Shoto a bit, since he had never seen his father even slightly ashamed, except for the one brief flash in his memory when his sister had relayed his mother's words to him before he banished her to the psych ward. He clenched his fist at the memory. Shaking it off, he saw Principal Nezu beginning to address everyone present. Apparently only All Might, Aizawa and Nezu knew what was going on, as even the teachers perked up a bit when it looked like Nezu was about to explain what was going on. Standing on the podium, he began addressing them. Please, everyone, we are here to discuss some things that will have a very deep impact in each and every one of your lives as well as society, as a whole. So, if you could find yourselves a seat, we will begin. At his words, the students drifted towards the center of the circular room, while the teachers drifted towards the edge, all while trying to decipher the nature of this meeting. Shinsu greeted Midoriya warmly, well, with relative warmth, given his disposition towards the hero course. As everyone found their respective seats, the only ones left on the stage were Nezu, and the mysterious cloaked figure, who on further inspection turned out to be female. Once they were seated, Nezu began. So, the lady by my side is from a small cult that descended from ancient Greece. You might recognize them from your history lessons, as the Oracle of Delphi. They have dedicated their lives to using their combined quirks to find out any prophecies that can be discerned from their quirks. They have seen some things that need to be shown to us, specifically, you students, as it affects you most of all. I'll allow her to explain further. With that, Nezu made his way to where the teachers were seated, the old man saving him a seat next to him. I've heard of a quirk that allows the user to see up to a point in the future. I've read about some things, whispers even, of a group such as this, but I didn't think I'd ever meet someone. This is a huge opportunity. But what could have happened for them to make such a decision how does it involve us how far into the future are they talking about what? Midoriya was broken out of his mumbling by Yuraka, who was looking at him with fond exasperation. Come on Deku, you'll miss what she's gonna say if you keep going on like that. After muttering out an apology and getting a positive response from Yuraka, he saw the woman removing her hood. Somehow he expected her to be really old, like recovery girl, but she looked surprisingly young. She was wearing some sort of protective gear underneath the cloak, and had sharp features. What made her stand out were the two antennae protruding from her skull. She seemed to be carrying some sort of communications device with her too. She was wearing a similar device on her head that seemed like a tiara. Her hair was white and flowed all the way down to her shoulders. She had an air of approachable wisdom around her. Somehow everyone felt relaxed at seeing her, even Minda's perverseness seemed to have been wiped away by her presence. When she began speaking, she had a voice that could only be described as nature. It was as if the flowers, grass and the blossoming trees themselves were speaking to them. Thank you, Mr. Principal, for introducing me to your colleagues in charges. She began. My name is not one I can freely say, but you may address me as Ms. Oracle. As your principal said before, I am a part of a cult that has descended from the Oracle of Delphi. The emergence of quirks led to the disbanding of the original temples as people began to doubt their veracity even more. But their last Pythia passed on her teachings to my master and the current Pythia of our cult, who has the necessary quirk for such a task. This got every person's rapt attention. So, does that mean that one of them was deemed worthy enough to get a prophecy? But who, and why were all of them present here? Oracle went on, this quirk allows her to see the past and the future of the people, who have a deep impact on society, or on the people who will have an impact on society. Bar one, all of you fall a bit into both categories, but lean towards the second. One of you, although, lies firmly in the first category, and is the one that holds all the strings together. Her occult consists of three people, the Pythia, myself and the Navigator. The Navigator's quirk allows her to transport me to wherever in the world I need to travel to, so as to provide them the means to travel back to the mountain atop which the Pythia may give them the required prophecies. In fact, she can only do so for one person at a time, and with so many people involved, it was considered as the best option to use the other method of imparting the knowledge gained from prophecies. Everyone was dying of curiosity as to what that was. Even Nezu wasn't in no, all he was told that the auditorium would be needed. The communications device I have allows me to form a constant mental link with the Pythia, who in turn, can see you through me. This allows her to create the necessary link required. True, Aizawa spoke up, that still doesn't explains your presence here. Couldn't the Pythia have come here herself if seeing all of them together was all she needed? Pulling his class away from a day of training, right before their work experience week was bothering him and not knowing was also drawing his ire. He knew the importance of time, and while this was not wasting it, even he knew that much, that woman's calmness was unsettling him, not that he'd ever admit it. Also, the presence of a red-headed feline was uncomfortable to him as well. Yes, I was getting to that. This is where I come in. While the Pythia is the one who has the required connection that tells us the future, she can only communicate with one of you at a time. Because of the way the prophecy speech takes place, my part in the cult is because of my quirk. It allows me to specifically channel the Pythia's connection and project it. 
It is like watching all you need to see is a show, a TV show, to be precise, she explained. But, that isn't all. What? How could there possibly be more? Everyone was having a hard enough time wrapping their head around all the information they'd been given in such a short span of time. But everyone focused their wits and cleared their heads. This was important, and if it affects everything like Ms. Oracle said it would, then they needed every scrap they can take from this. Since this involves so many people together, and all of them are interwoven together, this would be a little different from how you would usually see the prophecy. This will be like a proper show, with the one holding the thread that connects you all as the main character. For me to appropriately delve into the future, I must first show you the past. Specifically, the one's past. Of course, there is a chance that more people will have their past revealed. Then she took a deep breath and spoke the next words in a somber tone. Now, here is a decision that you, and I mean all of you must take. With the possibility that your past, your thoughts and your secrets being revealed, whether you're the one or not, would you accept to viewing the events that have transpired and those that have yet to transpire? Because if you do, then each and every one of you will be sworn to secrecy. You will be unable to reveal or discuss the contents of the prophecy with anyone outside this group. What, say, you? The last words were punctuated with a small thrum of energy. The hall descended into murmurs, with voices clashing, discussing the merits and demerits of such a prophecy and the oath of secrecy. Suddenly, present Mike's voice rang out. How do we know how accurate your prophecy is? I mean, isn't the future in some sort of, um, flux? Flux. Isn't it ever-changing or something? Ms. Oracle smiled a bit at this. Yes, you are correct, Mr. Mike. However, the powers of the Pythia aren't that superficial. The prophecy will reflect your reaction to the knowledge you'll attain. However, that will not be all-encompassing. I will be able to discern that something has changed due to this meeting. But it will take some effort on your part to work with that knowledge and use it to make the future better. Mike responded with a toothy grin and flashed a quick thumbs up before sitting back down. The first one to actually decide something was, surprisingly, Katsuki Bakugu. Hey, pointy head, you're saying that we need to see this so that we can prevent some future bullshit from happening, right? He growled at her. Not precisely, but something along those lines. It will also provide you with the knowledge you require to improve your powers. Ms. Oracle smiled at him, not at all unfazed by his uncouthness. Then what the hell are we waiting for? Bakugu shouted. The only catch is that we can't speak to someone outside this group. This group includes the top two heroes, the bloody principal, our homeroom teacher and all of our shitty classmates. Even the pink and purple haired extras are here, and that old geezer, and that bunch of cats. It's pretty damn stupid of you all just overthinking this. TCH, he ended with clicking his tongue and sitting down in a huff. Mr. Aizawa stood up and addressed the group. Yeah, in his own blunt way, Bakugu is essentially correct. This is an opportunity not available to anyone and taking advantage of that is the logical thing to do. That being said, keep in mind that you will be seeing a friend's life, their pains and trials, so respect that. Some of your own secrets might be revealed. Do not make this decision lightly. However, I would urge you all to grasp this, for not only your own but also the sake of the world. Nezu continued. Yeah, don't forget kids, this is a luxury that could have saved many a life, in more ways than one, if it was offered to someone else. The old man said in a gruff, albeit sorrowful tone. After some consideration, throughout which Ms. Oracle was patiently waiting on the stage, the students one by one came to the same conclusion. Yeah, I want to do this. If it helps my friends and helps me protect the world, then I'm definitely up for this. Plus, it is so manly to be able to see yourself as a character in a show. Hiroshima piped up. Totally man. I'm in too. That was Sato. We, knowing the future, will help me make myself as fabulous as moi can possibly be. Ayama added his 20 cents worth. Although I profess the darkness, shedding light on the life of the one will help us be the best we can be. I accept. Takoyami said, dark shadow escaping his control to give a thumbs up to everyone. Yeah, let's watch this, this is gonna be so cool. All throughout this, Midoriya was thinking about his secret. No, the secret. The secret of his quirkless past. The secret of All Might's true form. The secret of the quirk he received, All Might's quirk, one for all. The resolve built within him. As one by one everyone acknowledged their agreement to Ms. Oracle's terms, Midoriya quietly stood up. Seeing him stand up made everyone quiet down. I would like to discuss something with All Might, before I decide anything. As soon as he said that, everyone, except those who knew his secret, got confused. Why was the ultimate hero fanboy hesitating at the chance of a lifetime? Getting a nod from Ms. Oracle, he got up and signaled All Might to meet him. The old man spoke, so, Tashinori, is he the one? Yeah, he is the one, Gran Torino. He's my successor, the ninth holder of one for all. Tashinori Yagi, also known as All Might, replied. Uh, it seems logical that he'd want to discuss this with you, knowing that his secrets, your secrets might be exposed. What do you think about that? I'm sure. This is necessary. Before summoning all of us here, she spoke with Nezu, Aizawa, Enji and myself. As you might have guessed, he is also the one she keeps talking about. She told me that exposing these secrets were necessary, and no harm would come due to the oath everyone would be held under. It is quirk-induced, so practically unbreakable. Besides, each and everyone here is trustworthy, and the knowledge can only help them. 
All Might said, in soft but resolute tones. No one noticed both the Todoroki's eyes narrowing in suspicion. What secrets do you share with All Might, Midoriya? The younger Todoroki thought to himself. While the one for all users had their discussion, the students decided they needed to know one important detail. So, who's the main character? Mina decided to get that ball rolling. Yeah, I sure hope it's me, but I wouldn't mind if it was someone else either. Siro pitched in. Shut up. None of you extras are worth it. It'll be me, you'll see. Bakugu was back to his characteristic rude self. B-A-K-U-G-O-U. Please refrain from degrading your classmates in such a way in front of such an esteemed guest. Ada said with his karate chopping motions. The excitement and the gravity of the situation momentarily making him forget about his brother's condition. Nah man, let it be, I'm sure Bakubro would make a fine MC. The hardening quirk user piped in. Hero. I doubt it. I mean, the MC connects all of us right. As aloof as he is, how can we expect him to be it? Asui chimed. Hey, why don't we let Ms. Oracle say that? If you're willing to that is. Yuraka said meekly. Of course. Since it seems like a very likely possibility that all of you will agree, the main character of this show will be Izuku Midoriya. Whoa. That's so sick. So is he gonna be involved in some world-breaking event or what? Oh I'm pumped. Kaminari exclaimed. Does he get a lot of girls? Is that why he's so important? Please Midoriya teach him you are GHK. The purple-haired pervert was stopped mid-sentence by Gyro poking her earphone jack into his eye before he got any further. What? G-O-D-D-A-M-N-I-T. How is that shitty nerd the MC? That bastard. A-H-H-H. Someone exploded. When Midoriya came back, it looked like All Might had eased him of his worries over their shared secrets. After acknowledging his agreement, Ms. Oracle sat down into a lotus position and put on the communications device. Then, she began to pulse with energy, each thrum coming with increasing frequency. All right, once I start, I'll be able to go on till the length of an actual episode in real time. Until then, I will be unable to communicate with any of you, so please keep your questions for me till the end of the episode. You're free to converse among yourselves, and I'll be able to subconsciously pause at those moments where a lot of conversation takes place so you can discuss events without missing anything. Um, Ms. Oracle, what is the name of our show? Ajiro asked her before she went into her complete trance. Oh, it is called My Hero Academia. And with that she started projecting energy and the screen started to flicker on. As the episode was about to begin, Aizawa allowed himself a moment of contemplation. Flashback. Yes sir. Principal Nezu, you called for me. Aizawa said in his usual drawl. He was getting a bit impatient, he had a class to teach. On entering, he saw the principal, along with the hooded woman in all might in his buff form. Before he could try to figure out what was going on the principal signaled for him to take a seat. As he sat down, the hooded woman began speaking. She explained how she was from a cult of Athena, and that she had some news that would involve all of his students. When hearing that some, if not all of his student would be in some sort catastrophic situation, he felt a tug at his heartstrings. He wasn't normally a very emotional person, but his year students had managed to attach themselves to him in a way that he just couldn't explain. He cared for all of his students in a professional manner, but these kids were different. He'd formed an inexplicable bond with them over the short course of their time here and he didn't want them to be hurt. As the conversation went on, his eyes grew wider. Before he could interject however, there was a knock on the door. What? Someone else was supposed to be here too. As the door opened to reveal Endeavor in all of his flaming glory, a condescending look upon his face at being summoned, Aizawa realized that whatever that happened is going to be on a really large scale, for him to be involved so. End flashback. While Aizawa was lost in his own thoughts, the students were all filled with giddiness. They were finally going to see something from their cinnamon rolls past. He was never really open about his childhood, even with his best friends. All they knew was that he was friends with Bakugu, how that even worked was beyond them. Izuku himself was a bundle of nerves. While he had had his talk with All Might, who had assured him that while the secret of one for all would be revealed, he should trust his friends to accept the gravity of the situation. They would someday be his colleagues and he had to share the secret with some of them eventually. While he trusted most of them explicitly, he wasn't really sure how they would react to knowing his quirkless past. He had, after all this time, found true friendship. He didn't want it to be thrown away because of his secret. He was jostled out of his thoughts by Yuraka, who had an understanding expression on her face. Don't worry Deku, no matter what happens, we'll be there for you, isn't that right Ada? Yes, Midoriya. You have been nothing but a good friend to all of us, and I assure you that I will not waver from your side, Ada replied. Yeah. The sudden voice of Todoroki broke into the group. While everyone didn't know exactly what transpired between the two titans of the class, everyone noticed that they had become closer as a result. They had seen Todoroki interacting more with the class and also cracking a small smile every once in a while. No matter what Ms. Oracle shows us, now or in the future, you can count on me to stand by your side. Todoroki said with a serious look. Seeing all the support his friends were showing him, Izuku couldn't help but shed a few tears. Thank you guys, you have no idea how much this means to me. Izuku replied with a heartwarming smile. All this while Bakugu just silently looked on, with a tight feeling in his gut. He let out a low grunt and straightened himself as shitty hair started saying something. Hey man, do you think we'll be seeing something about you too? That would be awesome. 
I'd love to see little Blasty messing around, Hiroshima said with gusto. Bakugou sent him an annoyed glare which managed to shut him up but didn't get that grin off of his face. Ooh, it's starting. Quiet, you guys. At Mina's prompting, everyone became silent and paid rapt attention to the screen. It was around 4.15 p.m. in what looked like a local park. Little Midoriya could be seen with some tears in his eyes. He was also shaking a bit. AWWW was the general reaction of the girls and, surprisingly, Kirishima's reaction at seeing a little Izuku. You're so cute. Look at those little freckles. But why are you crying Midori? Ashido asked, but it was rendered moot by what they saw next. Why are you being so mean? You're making him cry Kakin. Little Izuku said while pulling down the hem of his shirt in nervousness. A younger boy could be seen on his knees behind him, he was crying too. If you keep on hurting him, I'll stop you myself. The younger Izuku took on a fighting stance. A younger Katsuki Bakugu could be seen standing with two more boys. His face twisted into a smirk and he said, You wanna pretend to be a hero. You don't stand a chance without a quirk, Deku. Punctuating the last sentence with a small blast. As the three boys launched themselves at him, the screen pans up to show the sky. But everyone knew exactly what happened. The people watching this were a bit annoyed. Sure, kids played and fought with each other more times than one can count. But still, seeing their friend hurt was a little sad. Hey man go easy on him. He's only stopping you from doing something wrong. Jeez Kaminari said with a sheepish look. Yeah man, Bakugu, that's sorta uncool. And what do you mean no quirk? Mina asked. It must be when they were very young, and their quirks must have just manifested. Midoriya is a bit younger than him, so his might not have appeared yet. Momo explained. Bakugu was a bit irritated. Shut the hell up. If the quirkless bastard didn't want to get beat up, then he should have stayed the hell away. Here's the sad truth, all men are not created equal. I learned that sad truth at the age of four. Some people were stronger than others. But that won't hold me back, but push me forward. Yeah, you go Deku. Don't let this meanie tell you otherwise. Your Raka piped up. Midoriya got a bit flustered at all the attention he was getting. Shinsu thought to himself huh, maybe he didn't have the privileged childhood I thought he did. Midoriya seemed to be in a rush to get somewhere. He stopped at Tatooine Station to see a giant of a man causing some ruckus. At this, the opening began to play. Whoa, cool. We have an opening too. Siro exclaimed. Yeah, but what's with those notebooks? Hey look guys, it's us. We, look at how magnifica I am. Everyone tensed a bit at the sudden appearance of Shigaraki. Seeing All Might fight Namu again made them realize how far they still had to go. Midoriya explained the emergence of Quirk which was really detailed. He went on to describe the rise of heroes and villains. Getting back to the villain Issei earlier, we see Death Arms rushing in to catch an electric pole. Backdraft also arrives to cordon off the civilians from the fight. Turns out the villain was just a bag snatcher who had freaked out and was now causing chaos. Seriously, what is wrong with people? So much potential wasted because of such irrationality. As I aside, that so lame was the thought running through everyone's head. Midoriya began sweating. He realized which day this was. It was a monumental day in his life, but all his biggest secrets were revealed that day. Kamui Woods arrives on the scene and a bunch of girls start fangirling over him. Midoriya goes into full fanboy mode, spilling every detail he knew about the guy. As the fight goes on, Woods lists out the charges against the villain and calls him the incarnation of evil. At this, the teachers sigh exasperatedly. Come on kid, slow it down a little bit. Incarnation of evil PFT. The old man chuckled. When I become a hero, the girls will be all over me just like him. Minda exclaimed. Everyone present there highly doubted that but kept themselves quiet. But man, Midoriya, I've got one thing to say, Hagakure chimed. What? She brought her hands together and shouted an EERDD. And almost everyone fell into giggles. Yoraka tried to console a slightly embarrassed Deku and Toru apologized, saying she just had to do it. You shouldn't be embarrassed by this Midoriya. Your fanboying has helped your analytical skills a lot. Shoto said. Yeah, you're a better person for it. Ajiro remarked. As Midoriya started to say Wood's special move along with him, the sudden appearance of Mount Lady knocking the villain off caught everyone off guard. A lot of men began shamelessly taking money shots. After a flirtatious comment to the reporters, she began to take in the admiration of the public, taking all the credit. Midoriya began writing in his notebook with his usual mumbling. Giganification how well she's definitely got the looks in. Attitude to be a hero her quirk is really showy. But it'll be kinda hard for her to get. Around the city much for damage. And lots of things. That means she might not be very useful. His mumbling was cut short by the man from earlier who pointed out his fanboying. He asked if he wanted to become a hero and gave him an acknowledgement of his aspiration. The title screen showed up with the name of the episode. Episode 1, Izuku Midoriya, Origin. That's some serious fanboy knowledge Midoriya, Ribbit. She remarked. Yes, your prowess for identifying everything is really noteworthy, Midoriya that was Takoyami. It's really nice to be able to hear what you're saying when you mumble, you know. Very informative. Jairo said, relieved at finally being able to figure out the shy boy's speech. It was hurtful to her pride, not being able to pick up what he was saying, even with her quirk. I hate that woman, came the exasperated sigh from midnight. I agree, she doesn't need to indulge the perverts, look at the state they're already in. 
Momo agreed with her teacher, while sending a glare mind his way who was drooling at seeing the hero show off her assets. The boy's analytical thinking and note-taking skills are very impressive. You should take advantage of that, help him develop it while simultaneously getting him to show his analysis of the others he knows. Ectoplasm remarked. Aizawa nodded in acquiescence. He knew about the notebooks, but had brushed them off as a hobby. He needed to take a look at those later too. The Aldera Junior High building could be seen. They zoom into the class of third years where the teacher was talking to them about their high school career choices, but suddenly throws away the documents he was holding, declaring that they all wanted to go to the hero course anyway. Everyone starts displaying their quirks, and the teacher half-heartedly tries to admonish them. Midoriya seems to be a bit down, with his arm half-raised. Hey, what's wrong man? Kaminari asks. Yeah, why aren't you showing off your quirk like everyone else? Sato chimed in. Maybe because his quirk would injure him. Remember not all schools have someone like Recovery Girl. Gator or reasoned. Suddenly Bakugu speaks up, Hey teach, don't lump me in with this bunch of losers. I'm the real deal, but these guys will be lucky to end up as psychics to some D-lister. His voice laced with condescending mirth. Geez, egotistical much. Gyro said with a little irritation in her voice. This got the entire class railing on him. They were, in a word, pissed, with Bakugu challenging them all. The teacher praised him and told him that he could get into UA. Hi. Everyone was shocked into silence as they whispered how difficult it was to get into UA, and how low the acceptance rate was. Izuku curled into himself as he heard this. Every student present there felt a sense of pride at having achieved this. It was really difficult, but they still made it, even Shinsu and Mei. Though they were a bit curious as to why Midoriya was acting so. Bakugu jumped onto his desk and began telling everyone how he was the only one from this school who was going to get into UA and how his dream was to be greater than All Might and become the richest hero there is. Most of the students' sweat dropped at this. The teachers chuckled a bit at their student's dream, but did not discourage him in any way. It is a very high goal you have set yourself young Bakugu. Be prepared to work extremely hard if you really want to achieve this. All Might tried to encourage him. Shut up. I know that already, said a fuming Bakugu. He remembered this day as well. He was extremely ashamed and guilt-ridden over his actions that day, and didn't want to know how everyone would react. Even though he says otherwise, he does care for some of their opinions. The teacher looked up and said that Midoriya too wanted to go to UA. Hi. At this everyone, including Bakugu froze. Only for a moment though. Soon, everyone was laughing their heads off, passing derogatory comments. Someone said that you couldn't get into the hero course without a quirk. At this Midoriya stood up to defend himself. Actually it isn't true. They got rid of that rule. I could be the first one. As soon as he said this, Bakugu slammed his hand onto Midoriya's desk and let off an explosion, breaking the desk and sending the green-haired teenager stumbling back. He told him that he was worse than the rest of his classmates, that he was below the rejects, that he was quirkless. He said that word as insultingly as he could. Midoriya started fumbling, apologizing and trying to placate the explosion quirk user. In a quiet voice, he said that it was his dream since he was a child and that even if he didn't have a quirk, couldn't he at least try? This served to anger the teen even more, and Izuku began seeing demons dance around him as his classmates. Everyone sat there, trying to digest what they'd just seen. The sheer animosity Bakugu had displayed for someone who was so kind and gentle to everyone baffled, and confused everyone present in the room. Even Endeavor and the old guy had funny expressions on their faces. Hey Bakugu, lay off of him man, what has he done to you? Kaminari broke everyone out of the shock they were feeling. Yeah, I agree, that's no way to treat a person, let alone someone you've known for so long. Shoji added. Hey Midoriya, why don't you smack him around a bit, that should shut him up. What did you say? Yeah, and what's this about you being quirkless, sure you can't show it off like other people, but you've got an extremely powerful one. Why do your classmates think of you like that? Ajiro asked. Um, um dot 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 well dot 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 you see dot 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 uhhh Midoriya stumbled with his words, not knowing what to say, he knows they will eventually find out, but he wants to delay that. It's not just his classmates. Didn't you see? He said that they removed the rule. He said that he could be the first one. Why did you think you were quirkless? Among the heroes, it wasn't any better. Quirkless. What does he mean quirkless? We've seen him in action more than once, and his quirk isn't anything to laugh at. He's broken through zero pointers, buildings and walls like they were paper. What's going on Aizawa? Cementos voiced their collective thoughts. Even the pussycats were intrigued. They hadn't seen more than the sports festival, but they could see potential in the lad. Not to mention high quirk. The old man smirked to himself, so you found another one just like you, didn't you Tashinori? This should be interesting. Endeavor was trying to piece together what he saw too. That brat needs to pipe down a bit. Too much heat in your head isn't really a good thing. I didn't realize this until it was too late and I'll be damned before I let someone else do the same. Although, the Midoriya boy's belief of his perceived quirklessness seems intriguing. Aizawa was no different. When he'd seen Midoriya for the first time, he'd instantly realized that his condition was because he lacked control over his quirk. He thought that the boy was lazy and slacked off, that's why he didn't improve his control over his quirk. Some hard handling had made the boy realize he needed to buck up and Aizawa was proud at having done that for him. 
Now, however, he thought that he may have judged him too quickly. But how did you find out your quirk? No, I don't know anything about this. This is the first time something like this has come up. Out of the corner of his eye, he could see All Might fidgeting a bit. At first he thought that maybe more people finding out about his true form was the reason. But now, his eyes narrowed at his colleague's actions. Let's keep watching, maybe we'll find out the answers we're looking for Principal Nezu quiet in the argument, for now. Another part of town in the same city is shown. A woman's cry breaks the silence. A slime monster is seen running away from a store with what was apparently stolen money. People are discussing the lack of heroes, relating it to the attack from the morning. A small, thin man is shown wearing army green pants and a white t-shirt. As he hears what's going on, he suddenly starts to transform and a huge, hulking man takes his place. When he assures everyone, they turn around and he says the three famous words he's known for. I am here. Whoa, is that all might? Ciro exclaimed. What was with that skinny form? Do you think it was imposter? Ashido thought out aloud. It could be, someone trying to boost the people's morale. It couldn't have been All Might right. Momo tried to explain this to herself more than others. Wait a minute, wasn't that the slime guy who got Bakugu? You were saved by All Might that day right? Kirishima asked, now a bit concerned for his friend. Those who knew of All Might's secret just sat quietly, trying to take in the reactions of everyone. As this discussion went on, Tashinori Yagi, also known as All Might started worry about his students' reaction to knowing his true form. If his students lost faith in him, then there was no telling what the public would do. The old man tried to calm him down. Relax Tashinori, these kids aren't that superficial. They know the real you, just being in a different body won't change that. Trying to give a reassuring smile back, he turned his eyes towards the screen. The scene shifts back to the school. Everyone's seen leaving the class and making plans with their friends. Midoriya is looking through his phone, checking out the fight from before on the news. As he prepares to write down some notes, Bakugu snatches the book away from him, telling him that they weren't done. He sees the title of the notebook and realizes that it's one of the hero analysis books. Midoriya tries to ask for his book back, but Bakugu blows it up between his hands. As soon as he does that, he throws the book outside the open window. Bakugu tells Midoriya about how most heroes show potential early on and how people just look at them and can say that they'll become a hero. He tells that that would be him once he's the only one from their school who gets into UA. Also saying that it isn't his ego speaking, he's just that good, while his friend taunts him behind his back. He started burning Midoriya's shoulder under his hands, telling him to stay away from UA. His lackeys taunt him even more, noting his lack of a retort. They say he's finally understood that he couldn't become a hero. What the hell man? That's so unmanly. He worked hard on that, and you actually burned him. Kirishima said, looking at his friend with a hint of anger. He knew what bullies could do. He'd seen some of the same things back in his junior high. And seeing one of his friends suffer through the same hardships didn't sit well with him. Yeah, you've got no right to hurt him like that you big bully. Don't listen to anything he says or does Deku. You're way better than he could ever hope to be. Yuraka spoke up for her best friend. While she knew that last part wasn't entirely true, she couldn't stop herself from trying to ease the hurt Izuku was feeling. Yes, Midoriya, you're already a hero in training at one of if not the best hero academies in the world. I'm sure you'll be a very fine hero someday. Ada encouraged his friend. Todoroki was fuming, seeing the one person who had helped him so much being put down in such a way was irking him. He was contemplating the consequences of having it out with Bakugu right now, but stopped short at remembering his old man was here too. Everyone was a bit miffed by the blonde's actions. They had seen that notebook, and now knowing what was in them and the amount of effort Midoriya had put into them, they were disappointed seeing that Bakugu so carelessly disregarded it. For once, Bakugu was quiet. They were almost there. He was about to say the words that he had regretted the moment they had come from his mouth. Though he had tried to bury them in the back of his mind, he couldn't do that. If Deku had somehow acted on those words, he wouldn't have been able to live with himself. He just shook off everything his classmates were saying and began glaring at the ground. Seeing his reaction, some of the class and the teachers tensed, the way the usually explosive teen acted. If he was this quiet then he must have witnessed something really big. Midoriya realized what was going to happen and tried to get Ms. Oracle to stop. But he was too late. You know if you really want to be a hero that badly there actually might be another way. Bakugu stopped at the doorway. Still smirking, he continued just pray that you'll be born with a quirk in the next life. And take a swan dive off of the building. Silence. Utter and complete silence. There were a few murmurs of discontent, which started it. A few sharp gasps, a quietly whispered no. He didn't. It was thoroughly shattered by the smell of smoke rising along with the room getting colder. Everyone was in too much shock to notice, but just before Kirishima could lay into his friend for his actions the floor froze. Todoroki erupted into small flames, and with a sharp cry lunged at Bakugu. You. You bastard. He saw red. He knew well enough what emotional abuse could do to a person. He'd been on the receiving end more than once. Seeing someone he had truly considered a friend for the first time in his life, to go through this made him mad. Kirishima didn't move to block him, or move Bakugu away. Heck Bakugu himself didn't move, though he himself was shaking. Whether in rage at himself or someone else was unknown, but before Todoroki could even singe the bastard, his quirk was cancelled. 
He looked over to Aizawa, who had an uncannily neutral look on his face. Once he realized the hal hot half cold quirk user wouldn't assault his classmate, he let his quirk die down. Before anyone could say or do anything, Aizawa said in a voice that brokered no argument, No one, and I mean no one will talk about this right now. We will be discussing this action and your behavior once we get out of here, Bakugu. Be advised, you will not walk away free from this. This is not something you should say lightly, be it anyone in front of you. With that, he sat down and didn't look at anyone. He sat there with his mask on, but those who knew him well were aware of the rage he was feeling. Tashinori was torn up at the life his successor had been leading before he met him. He remembered his words to him at the rooftop, and though he knew it had to be said, dropping such a thing onto a boy who had been through so much that very same day made him loathe his actions even more. He had let his ire at his own condition color his response. It was a miracle that young Midoriya had not taken his words to heart, and had been strong enough in his determination that he soldiered on. He vowed to not let his own emotions let him make someone else's life bitter. You may never know what someone's going through when you speak to them, and one word could send them off the edge. As Bakugu sat down, he looked around at the faces of his classmates. Half and half in glasses had a look of unbridled rage on them. Hair for brains looked so hurt, as if someone had killed his puppy and then spat at the corpse. Round face looked fearful, as if Deku would jump off right now. And Deku, that bastard had a what? He had an apologetic look on his face, as if he had something wrong and wished to have change it. He couldn't take that look. D-A-M-N-I-T-D-E-K-U. Don't look down on me like that. He began only to be cut off by Aizawa's glare. He grunted and sat down, while shitty hair was still trying to process what was going on. Midoriya is seen walking outside the school building, talking to himself saying how it was very stupid of Bakugu to say such a thing. If he had jumped then it would have been on his head. He saw the burnt book floating in the pond with a few fish nibbling on it. He picked it up. He stared at its burnt pages and cursed Bakugu mentally. Many of the teachers lauded his level-headedness, some of them sending him a small smile. Snipe suggested counseling sessions for both the boys, looks like they seriously needed them. No one said anything when the cinnamon roll swore. He deserved it after all the crap he'd been through. The scene shifts to show a young Midoriya holding an All Might action figure in his hand jumping at his mother's feet. Come on mom, it's computer time. Up in his room, which was filled from top to bottom with All Might posters and paraphernalia, young Midoriya is shown rocking back and forth in his chair, urging his mother to go faster. She remarks that he might have added 10,000 views to the video himself. Oh my gosh this is so c u u u u t e was the general reaction of the room, with the girls, including Midnight, getting all teary-eyed at the actions of a little Izuku. Ah, you've been a fanboy since the very beginning, haven't you young Midoriya? All Might grinned at seeing evidence of the admiration his successor had for him. Endeavor could be heard saying that he could have made some room there for his own stuff, to which everyone within earshot cracked a small smile. The old man was laughing wholeheartedly, seeing childish innocence never got old. This is so precious. Hagakure exclaimed while snapping quick shots with her phone, everyone asking her to send them a copy. Izuku was embarrassed a little by this, but he wouldn't hide his admiration for his idol from anyone for the world. Hey, what video is this? Is it something we know? Siro asked. Yeah, you seem really excited to watch this Deku. Yuraka said. I think I know what this is. I believe it is a favorite for most of us. Ida replied. An older Midoriya can be heard in the background. The video I loved was an old one. Disaster footage from a long time ago. But it was also the debut of the greatest hero ever. People are seen exclaiming about the number of people the hero had already saved. Young Midoriya's eyes lighten up in anticipation. A loud booming laughter is heard and we can see All Might carrying people in his hands and on his back. Midoriya practically glows at seeing his idol. All Might shows his signature smile and says his evergreen phrase. Midoriya is blown away by this. He declares his coolness and decides that once he gets his quirk he would be a hero just like him, and tries out the characteristic laugh. Ah, man I loved this video as a kid too. This was amazing. Hiroshima piped up, the anguish from earlier momentarily forgotten by the excitement of the little kid. Yeah, I love that video, still do. It was my inspiration. To become a hero, Midoriya replied. I think everyone was into that video, but definitely not as much as you dude. Kaminari added. Hero. That's true, I doubt anyone can match Midoriya's enthusiasm when it comes to All Might. Yuraka merely chuckled, seeing her friend so happy made her feel good. There was no shortage of teasing up with the teachers. All Might was blushing from the sheer admiration his successor displayed early on. But he was proud to have impacted his life so early on. The scene shifts to a hospital, with a doctor sitting in his chair. He casually drops a bombshell onto Izuku. In a callous manner, that makes Aizawa look like Ishido in comparison. His mother talks in a worried tone and the doctor replies that by now he should have manifested either one or a combination of both of his parents' quirks. He shows the shot of an x-ray that shows Izuku's foot, which has an extra toe joint that signifies the lack of a quirk. He says that Izuku will not develop a quirk. A sad music starts playing, and it's raining back at Midoriya's home. Midoriya's mother is shown looking sadly at Izuku who's watching the All Might video again. See that mom. There's always a smile on his face no matter how bad things get. Izuku says, with his voice cracking up. 
Even when things seem impossible, he never gi dot dot fess up. He turns around to face his mother and we see her tearing up at her son's face. He's pointing at the screen with a big, watery smile, and tears falling from his eyes. Do you think? I can be a hero too. At this, the present Midoriya bursts into tears, remembering all the emotions he felt. Yuraka holds him in a hug, tears falling freely down her face, like most of the people present there. Even the stoic Shoto had a sorrowful expression on his face. Kaminari complained that the music was too damn strong for him and Kirishima went, and patted Midoriya on his back. Ida also tried to reassure his friend, and so did everyone else. They were still confused as to the nature of his quirk, given his apparent quirklessness, which was now confirmed by the doctor, but their curiosity could wait. Their friend needed them now, and that was all that mattered. She walks towards him and envelops him in a hug, apologizing to him. The older Izuku's voice is heard mom, that's not what I needed you to say. Couldn't you see, my world was crumbling. There was only one thing I wanted to hear. The scene shifts back to the present day, with Midoriya having a determined look on his face. No matter what anyone else says, I have to believe in myself. I'll keep smiling, just like him. Yeah, you go Deku. Yuraka tried to cheer her friend up. Yes, fight the darkness within you, with the sunshine that is your unbreakable will. Go on man, we're with you. All the way. With each little scrap of support he got, Midoriya sat a bit straighter. Yes young Midoriya, your past may have had to face a lot of hardships, but you have friends now, who will support you, just like I will, until you're ready to tell the world that you are here. Tashinori smiled as he said this. The teachers were heartened by seeing the sheer amount of determination their charge possessed. Damn, Shota, you've got one heck of a kid and one heck of a class there. Present Mike remarked. Aizawa let out a rare smile at seeing the determination of his student even after the hardships he faced. Even Endeavor was impressed. Izuku walks down the tunnel laughing hard like All Might. When some tentacle starts rising up from a grate, he exclaims at seeing a villain. The villain says that he would serve well to hide from the heroes. What? That bastard got Deku too. Bakugu thought to himself while clenching his fists from the memory. Cries of what? No, run Midoriya. Was repeated around the room. The heroes in the room were feeling every frustrated. Seeing someone in trouble and not being able to help was hated by each and every one there. The villain told Midoriya to stop resisting as it would be easier for the both of them. Izuku struggled against the villain, finding it difficult to breathe. He couldn't do anything as the villain's body was liquid. As he struggled, the villain taunted him, telling him that he was a real hero to him. He said something about getting away fast but Izuku couldn't concentrate, as his body was getting weaker. I think I'm dying. This can't be the end. Somebody, help. Everyone was horrified at seeing their friend in such a say. Some of their faces were green, while others were not far away. The pros knew how troublesome it could be dealing with such a monstrosity, even more so for a quirkless teenager. Damn it. If I was a little bit faster, I could have saved him so much suffering. Tashinori thought to himself. While he knew what was coming, he couldn't help but shiver at the thought of what could have happened if he was even a moment too late. Deku, please be alright. Yuraka pleaded to nobody specific. She knew it was going to be fine, he was right here beside her, but she couldn't help but worry for him when his life was in danger. The rest of her classmates weren't faring any better, even Bakugus knuckles were white due to him gripping the edge of his seat so tightly. He knew how it felt, it must be many times worse for Deku, who had the villain's undivided attention. All they could hope for was someone, please save him. Suddenly, bright blue eyes flashed and the sewer lid was blown off. The villain's eyes widened in shock. A calm, deep voice was heard from the crouched man. Have no fear you're safe. Epic music began playing in the background. All Might stood in all his glory and smiled while saying now that I'm here that is. The villain tried to frantically attack him but All Might easily ducked and launched himself at the villain while shouting T-E-X-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
He screamed in delight and bowed so rapidly, thanking him in the process that one might be worried that he would get a head injury. He said how this autograph would be an heirloom, a family treasure passed down for generations. Everyone cracked up at Midoriya's fanboying. PFFFTT, HOAH ha ha ha. Dude, come on, seriously. This was Kaminari, who was rolling on the floor by this point. Hey 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 hey, PFFT, ha ha, oh my god Deku, this is too much. I know you just almost died but that reaction is priceless. Iraka giggled. Yeah, now that I look back at it, it does seem a bit extreme Midoriya replied, scratching the back of his head sheepishly. But seriously Midori, an heirloom. Mina was cracking up too. Ida and Todoroki were smiling fondly at their friend. Though the teachers were enjoying the mirth in the room, some of them were admonishing All Might for waking up the knocked-out boy in such a manner. Seriously, what is wrong with you? Do I really have to teach it to you again? Recovery girl dug into All Might. He just sheepishly waved her off saying that he was out of time and whatnot. She kept admonishing him, saying that this was no excuse. All Might turns around and pats his pockets where he's kept the bottles and says that he needs to get the villains to the police. He bids the boy goodbye. When Midoriya asks if he's leaving already, All Might replies that heroes are constantly fighting crime as well as enemies. He's perplexed at this as he wants to ask him some things. No, the one word came from the audience. Everyone looked only to find Shinsu holding his head in his hands. Please tell me he didn't he said this more to himself than those around him. All Might understood what he was saying and said in a deadpan voice he did. The old man cracked up and started muttering about crazy fanboys while the others were befuddled. Did what? Hagakir asked in a very confused tone. Midoriya tried to make himself smaller. You'll see. He said in an embarrassed tone. As All Might jumped into the air, he felt a small weight on his leg and turning around he saw the young man from earlier hanging onto his leg with his eyes and mouth being blown away from the wind. Hey hey hey, what do you think you're doing? Let go. I love my fans but this is too much. Silence, and then laughter. And then some more, and then some more. Izuku was blushing red at this point. The teachers were all either chuckling or outright laughing, even the pussycats. Endeavor had a smirk on his face, mostly due to his rival's discomfort. Even Tashinori shared a laugh at the memory. The students however were rolling on the floor. Bakugu was still a bit annoyed and snapped at Midoriya hey nerd. Close your damn eyes and mouth. What do you think you're doing? A few heads turned his way, but they ignored him for now. Hi. Now that's some manly dedication. Way to go Midoriya. Hiroshima said while holding his stomach. Hatsum found absolutely nothing wrong with what Midoriya did, stating that one needs to go to the extremes to follow their passions. Getting blown up once in a while is all part of the deal. Even Koda was chuckling to himself at the scene. I can't. If I let go now I'll die. Midoriya exclaimed while hanging onto All Might's leg. All Might conceded that he had a point. When Midoriya said that he had a lot of things to ask him personally, All Might acquiesced and told him to keep his eyes and mouth shut. He held onto his collar. A dribble of blood flows out of his mouth. Shit. Seeing this, everyone who didn't know about his secret got worried. All Might, what's going on? Are you alright? Ajiro asked. Yeah, what's up with you? The red-headed hero dressed in red, Mandalay from the Pussycats group shot. I think it will be explained in a short while. It's best if we wait for it. Aizawa explained, saving All Might the trouble. A weird expression came across Mandalay's face when the Erasure hero addressed her, but she settled down anyway. After finding a suitable roof, All Might landed atop it. Midoriya is completely shaken up saying he saw his life flash before his eyes. All Might told him that it wasn't a very smart move and if he banged in the door for a while, someone would let him in. As he starts to leave, Midoriya stops him once again. All Might doesn't slow his stride, but tells him that he doesn't have any time. Midoriya shouts out that he has to know something. Again, we see flashbacks to the time when the doctor told him he can't have a quirk, his mother apologizing to him. Bakugus taunts and amidst this, he pulls his hand back. Seeing this again, makes the students tear up again. Then, this hits the feels every time Siro sniffed. I'm telling you, it's this goddamned music. Kaminari complained. Manly tears. Manly tears. Kirishima chanted. Yoraka just held Midoriya's hand tightly in her own, silently reassuring him. Midoriya in turn squeezed her hand back, telling her he understood. Sometimes I do feel like a failure, like there's no hope for me. But even so, I'm not gonna give up. Ever. Then he speaks up loudly is it possible to become a hero even if I don't have a quirk. His hands were taut and held at his sides. He closed his eyes and with all his determination asked again. I'm a normal kid without any powers. Could I ever hope to be someone like you? His cheeks were flushed and he was shaking, but he held his ground. All Might stopped and turned around to look at him again. The older Midoriya's voice is heard in the background meeting All Might was a dream come true. A real miracle. Standing in front of me was the hero I'd idolized most of my life. I didn't realize it at the time but that chance encounter would change the course of my future. And with that, the outro started playing. Everyone took a collective deep breath. This had been an emotional roller coaster from the very beginning. There were a lot of things everyone wanted to discuss and talk about. But before anyone could do or say anything, they saw Ms. Oracle slumping to the floor. Everyone was startled and thought something was wrong with her. Ada shouted out to the principal who reassured everyone. It's okay everyone. She told me that this could happen. 
She's just exhausted from the mental connection and is in a special meditative state right now. Any physical disturbance would break her out of it and cause her to lose vital recovery time. Rest assured she's in no discomfort, apparent or otherwise, Principal Neza replied. After learning that she was fine the students tuned on to Bakugu. No one had forgotten what he had done. Most of them were questioning his placement as a hero but before it could go any further Midoriya went and stood between him and his angry classmates. Guys, it's alright. It was all in the past. Kakin didn't really mean those words. He's probably regretted them from the moment he said them. Leave him be. His drive to become a hero is something I compare to my own. So if you don't think I can't become a hero, then Kakin deserves no less. He said with fiery determination in his voice. He was surprised to hear the voice of his homeroom teacher behind him. That may be, but we can't let it go unchecked. While it did happen before UA. To be hero, we need to make sure he knows what he did was wrong. Even if it was as unintentional you make it out to be. Back you go, follow me. And with that the teacher and the fuming student moved away. Once he was gone Midoriya let out a sigh of relief. From experience he knew that Kakin was on the verge of an emotional breakdown and would react in two possible ways. He'd either blow up in a manner never seen by any of them before, or he'd cry. And Izuku didn't know which one he was more afraid of. As he turned around, Izuku was suddenly enveloped in a hug by Yuraka. The close proximity was making him blush to his roots, and that was before she began whispering in his ear. Deku, I'm really sorry for all that you had to go through. I'm sorry it took so long for me to meet you. I'm sorry for all the hurt people have caused you. But I promise you one thing. It'll be alright you know. You'll never be alone. Because I'm here. She decided to use that cheesy line to relieve the tension. That was before she realized her position and what she had said. But before she could get away, both of them were surrounded by their classmates. Suddenly Mina exclaimed group hug. Hey no fair, I wanna cuddle too Hagakure whined. Make room for me too guys. Kirishima added. Soon, it was a dogpile with Midoriya at the bottom, but he had never felt lighter. He felt as if he could take on All Might and win. Ada, Todoroki, Yeyurazu and Shinsu watched on with soft smiles as Hatsum decided a picture was necessary. Once everyone got off though, someone asked the question he was dreading the most. Hey, so if you're biologically quirkless, how is it that you can smash through buildings? As Midoriya started sweating Todoroki chirped in. I know. What? Well come on already tell us. Isn't it obvious? He's All Might's secret love child. Todoroki deadpanned. Oh come on Todoroki, not this again. I told you this isn't it. Midoriya defended it. But come on dude, you're so similar to him. Quirks and everything. Your mannerisms, speech, and even style. You get your looks from your mom but you're definitely All Might's son. Yeah, that's it. Suddenly, present Mike shouted using his quirk a w w y e a h h h. Dad Might's a thing. No it is not his ashy. how many times did I tell you that? All Might started to chastise his colleague. But that still doesn't answer the question Midoriya. What is your quirk? Yeyurazu asked. I think it's best if you guys find out watching the show. I know it seems but it isn't really my secret to tell. Sorry guys. Midoriya said with his head hung low. Hey, don't sweat it man. If you're not comfortable telling it then it's completely cool. Besides, keeping someone else's secret is pretty manly too. Kirishima gave him a toothy grin. Midoriya sighed in relief. Bakugu came back from his talk with Aizawa and still looked miffed but he wasn't outright furious. Aizawa had promised him more of this talk was to come, but had laid down the law for him. The heroes were discussing the boy's life and his quirk too, and no one, except those who knew about One for All could figure the puzzle out. When Ms. Oracle woke up, she told everyone to get ready for the next episode and got back into her position. When everyone got into their seats, all Tashinori could think was I hope my form is explained soon, I can't hold on to it much longer. Previously on TSPF. When Ms. Oracle woke up, she told everyone to get ready for the next episode and got back into her position. When everyone got into their seats, all Tashinori could think was I hope my form is explained soon, I can't hold on to it much longer. As everyone was settling down to watch the next episode, Tashinori reflected on the meeting from earlier that day. Flashback. When Endeavor entered the room, the temperature seemed to drop a notch, Despite the Hellflame quirk user's abilities, the cold that settled in his gaze at seeing me was palpable. I don't know what exactly makes you hate me so, Inji. Sure, we were rivals in our youth, and you've always been trying to fight me for the number one spot, but that can't be it, can it? I thought to myself, why have you summoned me here? I have better things to do than gossip about your petty problems. You better hope this is good, or so help me before he could get truly riled up he was stopped mid-sentence by a sharp rap on the table. On looking, it was her that made the sound. Throughout the short time she had been in the office, the mysterious woman had maintained a neutral look and posture. She'd been polite when addressed to, or when he requested something from them. But right now, she was in a defensive posture, but it wasn't as if she were afraid of the ball of flame. No, she looked as if she was preventing herself from lashing out. Well, well, looks like you've made an unimpressive impression on the woman. Before you've even addressed her. That's a new one, Angie. As I was musing to myself, she walked over to him, and whispered something in a low tone. 
I raised an eyebrow when Enji almost let his flames die out in shock, but seemed to control himself and put on a neutral mask on his face. Who do you think you are speaking on matters you have no knowledge of? His tone was dangerously quiet, and I prepared myself in case I had to intervene for the lady's sake. But she whispered something again, which sent him into shock once more. But this time he recovered quicker and gave her a look of agreeance mixed with mixed with watch. I couldn't figure it out, but that was a mystery for another time as the woman began to speak once more. End flashback. The screen comes to life, showing a young Izuku once again being metaphorically blown away by the video depicting his idol's debut. From a few rows behind him Izuku hears a voice that seems suspiciously like his homeroom teacher saying something about noisy, flashy, show-offs but decided to focus on that rather than on the girl beside him saying that his cuteness overload is gonna be the death of me. The scene shifts back to the doctor's office, who breaks the new of Izuku's condition to him like an egg thrown at a speeding all might. That man should have his license revoked. Doesn't he understand the psychological impact of such news on a toddler? Chiyo Shuzanji Ako. Recovery girl grumbled. Some of the heroes present nodded in agreement, not liking the careless actions of the doctor. Even if I'll never have superpowers. Older Izuku says in a dejected voice. You're worse than these rejects you corkless wannabe. Bakugu's words ring in his ears. Even if everyone thinks I'm useless. I'm sorry Izuku. I wish things were different. Mom, that's not what I needed you to say. Couldn't you see? Despite everything. I still dream. And I have to know. Izuku gathers up his courage for the outburst. Is it possible to become a hero? Even if I don't have a quirk. His voice stops all might in his tracks. Damn dot 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 not gonna do it. Kaminari is heard sniffling in the background. Let it out jamming way. We feel it too. Sitting beside him, gyro consoles. Yeah man, it's totally manly. Totally. Hiroshima reassures while taking deep breaths. This gets me every time. Toru whimpers. I'm a normal kid without any powers. Could I ever hope to be someone like you? He exclaims, still shaking in his boots. As All Might turns around to look at the absolute nerve wreck that is Midoriya, and repeats his words, a flash of pain runs through his body, making him double over as steam rises from his body. And oh, not now. D-A-M-N-I-T, not here. Izuku is still lost in his thoughts and is looking away in his embarrassment as he begins mumbling. He doesn't notice the stuff that is going on with the man in front of him. Seeing the way All Might is reacting to the pain in his body, everyone who doesn't know about his condition goes rigid in their seat. He's the number one hero, what could be causing him such distress? I, All Might, what dot 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 what's going on? Mina stutters out a question. Everyone wants to ask the same question, but they can't bring themselves to look away from the screen. Midoriya goes on, stating his motivation and ideals. Makes me want to prove them wrong. Since I was a kid I thought that saving people was. As he is speaking, a lot of steam has accumulated and has completely hit an all might. Come on, kid. Damn, when he gets his motor running, there's no stopping it is there. Snipe just lets the rhetoric hang in the air. A few people chuckle at this, but everyone else still have their eyes glued to the screen. So that's why you're not all jumpy around him in school. He already knows your secret. Midnight remarks. As All Might nods his head, sweat rolling down his forehead. The moment of truth had come. Endeavor 2 was curious at this point, but still had his pride to look after, so settled with gluing his eyes to the screen. Damn it, you nerd. Look up for a goddamn moment will you. TCH. Katsuki clicked to himself, as he didn't wasn't to gain everyone's attention at the moment. Hey Midoriya, you should really be mindful of your surroundings. It is very essential to be a hero, as not doing so can lead to some really tedious situations. Shoji threw in his opinion to the green-haired who was blushing at his own stupidity. I want them to see my smile and feel safe. I want to be someone who people look up to. Just like you. At this, he looks up at his role model only to find a lanky, skinny man in place of him. Principal Nezu asked Ms. Oracle to stop for a moment as Aizawa mentally counted down from 3 dot 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 2 dot 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 1 dot 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 here it comes. While there were general sounds of disbelief flitting across the room, the one that was loudest was, surprisingly, Endeavors. Are you serious? What's going on with that weak little body? His exclamation silenced everyone in the hall. He didn't care though, he pushed on. Damn it all might. I did everything I could to get ahead of you. But the harder I worked, the more obvious the gap between us became. The stronger you got dot 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 the angrier I became. Have you any idea what you've cost me? He bellowed, letting his fire grow hotter. He was absolutely raging inside his mind. Everything he had ever done wrong in his life since becoming a hero was in reaction to his increasing prowess. All his walls of reason were crumbling. His rationale that he used to ease his guilt away on difficult nights was being torn apart. The feeling of ice surrounding him broke him out of his stupor. He could see his son trying to minimize the damage he was inadvertently causing. Even Eraserhead had gotten up to intervene. He cooled himself down and signaled his son to melt the ice, which he did as silently as he could. Todoroki was shaken. Never, and he meant never, had he heard so much emotion in his father's cold, calculating voice, not when he raged about All Might, not when he was training him, not even that day. To see him like that, it made something twist in his chest, and he didn't know what he was supposed to make of it. As All Might stood up, every eye in the room was on him. 
While he was no stranger to being in the spotlight, he couldn't help but feel nervous at their collective gazes. Before he could say anything though, Aizawa cleared his throat and got everyone's attention. I'm sure there's no need to waste so much time. He will be explaining his condition to Midoriya, and any questions you have can be asked later. As he saw some hesitant nods, he sat down and asked Oracle to start again. Midoriya freaks out and his scream breaks through the sky as he sees the man in front of him. The screen blacks out and the opening begins to play. No one commented on Midoriya's freak out as they were about to go though one themselves not a moment ago. At a sizzling sound coming from behind them, the students turn around to see everyone staring at All Might and the steam coming off of his body. He sighed, reverting to his original form for everyone to see. Endeavor still looked a bit shook up and looked away. The pussycat stared with shock at the symbol of peace as if he'd grown a sideways mustache on a head that he grew upon a second head on his body. The students were not faring well either. Seeing their hero in such a state had shaken them to their core. They were, each one of them, rendered speechless. Except Midoriya, who was trying to analyze everyone's reaction. He was just as afraid of this as All Might was. This secret was a huge one, for the symbol of peace and justice was infallible. It had no weakness, saving the day with a fearless smile. To see him weaken so could be catastrophic. The usually stoic and indifferent Shinsu was looking on with unhidden horror on his face. Even the usually immovable Mei was stuttering some sort of reassurance to herself. Shoto still hadn't gotten over his father's actions to actually ponder over the secret. In his turmoil, he didn't notice that he called him father and not that man. They turn back, again sitting in rapt attention for the explanation that was to come. The scene is shown to be at an alley in Tatooine district. The bottle in which the sludge villain was captured is lying on the ground, with the hooligan waking up and remembering how he got into this position. Bakugu is seen walking with his lackeys. Dude, was that the same day? Kaminari asked, wary of the blonde teen's reaction. He knew that subject was touchy with Bakugu. He absolutely hated it. Hiroshima too looked at the ash blonde next to him for an answer. Bakugu let out a frustrated grunt, and that was enough for everyone around him to understand that this was an admission. Dem, Siro finished the thought in everyone's mind. This entire day seemed to be filled with crucial points in so many people's lives. So this was the sort of weight Ms. Oracle was talking about. The lackeys were seen trying to tell him that his actions were too harsh on Midoriya. It's his own fault for getting in my way. Katsuki replied in a subdued voice, but there was a finality in his tone. He kicked the bottle that contained the slime villain to punctuate the statement. This caused it to get free. You really are a great idiot, aren't you? Shinsu said in his usual deadpan voice. This in turn led to Katsuki preparing to blow him to bits. He was tensed enough already. He didn't want his peers, heck, anyone to see him so helpless and weak and dot 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 that damn Deku. Before he could actually do anything though, one by one everyone piped in how it was his own fault, Aizawa adding a warning to it for the future. As if he didn't already know that. All this attention was getting to him, he was supposed to revere damn it. Not looked down upon. Remembering Deku's words from the classroom. I may not have my quirk dot 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 but I may still try my hardest, can I? He told them someone needed to teach him a lesson, while blowing up the soda can in his hand. His friends suggested some things to do to take his mid of off things. When they suggested going to a bar, Bakugu vehemently denied the proposal. You idiots. If we get caught, there's no way you a would let me in. The teachers sighed at hearing this. He's doing the right thing. It's his motivation for doing so that is troubling. Cementos remarked. Indeed, he also hid his bullying tendencies well enough for what I'm assuming are the same reasons. Hound Dog added. The teachers nodded. The fact that someone with a personality like his even got in is a bit worrisome. He's good at heart that much we know from the time he's been here, but we can't let it happen again. He might be good at hiding his good side, but what if someone is hiding a villainous side in them? We need a way to screen the students we enter, apart from their practical and theoretical ability, Aizawa suggested. Many of the teachers nodded at this. Nezu said that this was something to be looked at another day. As he finished his impromptu blow up, Katsuki noticed the terrified expression on his lackeys' faces. One of them was pointing right behind him. Don't. Don't turn around. Run away, kid. This was Pixie Bob, ever the fan of horror movies, who knew exactly what was going to happen next. Turning around he saw a green, goop-like substance rising. I like a skin suit with some fire. And with that the title screen pops up. Episode 2, What It Takes to Be a Hero. Everyone started fretting over the fate of the grumpy blonde in their midst. Sure, they knew he got away all right, All Might himself had swooped in to save the day, just like they'd seen with Midoriya. But the catch was that he was apparently in some sort of discomfort, what it was they still didn't have a clue about. Hey Bikubro, how long did you? I mean, was it? Hiroshima let the question hang in the air. Bakugu's reaction, or lack thereof was all the reply he needed. Midoriya was remembering that day himself. So much had happened in such a short span of time, it seemed unreal to the green-haired teen. But it did happen, and now everyone would know how important a day it was, in more ways than one, for more than a single person. Kakan's attitude had changed drastically in the aftermath. It wasn't anything apparent or obvious, but to someone like Izuku, who keenly observed everyone around him, it stood out like a sore thumb. He would never admit it, but something in Bakugu had snapped after that day. What it was is something that has eluded him till date. 
The screen shifts back to the rooftop with Midoriya screaming his lungs out at seeing a frail man replace the symbol of peace before him. He starts thinking out loud, exclaiming that he deflated. He starts looking around, hoping to see All Might running away somewhere. Seriously though, Midori, deflate. Ashido asked, the usual chirpiness slipping back into her tensed voice for a bit. This made a few of the people present chuckle, but nobody's attention wavered. You're not him, you're a fake. An imposter, Midoriya accuses. All Might sighs at the fanboy's reaction. He assures him that he is in fact All Might, but his last words are punctuated with blood flowing out of his mouth. All Might goes on to explain that his buff form is like a guy at a swimming pool sucking in his gut and flexing. Izuku can't believe what he's hearing. No, I'm dreaming. All Might's a giant of a man who saves everyone. He defeats all obstacles and wins the day with a fearless smile. He rambles on. Hearing this All Might sighs. There's plenty of fear behind that smile. Everyone in the room, especially the students were shocked into silence. Sure, they weren't really naive, but hearing it being said out loud by their idol, their pillar of hope and strength that he is afraid to, it broke them a little. Midoriya, who'd already had this conversation couldn't help but feel the same emotions all over again. Sure, he knew more about All Might's secret, probably as much as pretty much anyone who's alive, but he still wished to believe that his mentor could hold himself at the pedestal he was placed on by everyone. The teachers and heroes' reactions were a bit subdued, mostly because they understood it better. They knew how important it is maintain the morale of citizens as well as fellow heroes, and All Might did that. But they had known in some deep recesses of their minds that he had to be faking it sometimes. Endeavor settled for snorting derisively at the blonde man. He was still digesting this news. I'm counting on you to keep your mouth shut. Don't go talking about this online or telling your friends. No extra warnings or words of caution were needed by anyone. Everyone knew how delicate this matter was and disastrous it would be should this be made public. Even if they weren't oath-bound by Ms. Oracle, no one would utter this outside of the present group. A ruffling sound is heard and Midoriya visibly flinches at what he sees. He is absolutely horrified at the sight. What? What? What did you see, Deku? Yuraka couldn't hold her question back, though it was rendered moot a moment later. All Might is seen lifting up his shirt to show a large wound in his side. The scars ran from the upper end of his navel all the way to his left pectorals. Around the region of what should have been his false ribs, a large dent is seam equals n. The skin is folded in on itself, and everything seems permanently bruised. People, even those who knew of his condition, went green at the sight. A few students ran to nearby trash cans and got sick, those who didn't look damn near close. Even the seasoned veterans, the ones with steady stomachs cringed physically at the sight. That was gruesome indeed. Midoriya paled at the sight of his mentor's wound. It never failed to shake him up. This was one of his stronger motivations to learn to control his quirk even better, so he could relieve the load on his teacher's shoulders. Pretty gross, huh? I got this in a big fight, five years back. My respiratory system was basically destroyed and I lost my whole stomach. All the surgeries have pretty much worn me out, and it can't be fixed. Right now I can only do hero work about three hours a day, he said in a dejected voice. Rest of the time, this is what I look like depreciating humor flowed thick in his voice. Whoa, really? Only three hours? Kaminari stated, still looking a bit sick. Is that why you are always in a hurry between classes all might? Momo asked, concerned for her teacher lacing her voice. All might nodded in response. No respiratory system, absent stomach. What happened to my brother doesn't even hold a candle to what he's been through, but he still soldiers on. Helping people Ada's mind was up in turmoil once again. His deep, burning hate meshed with confusing feelings. Despite all this, he still smiles. Endeavor thought to himself, his respect for the man growing, ever so slightly. Hatsum's perky voice suddenly drew everyone's attention. Hey, All Might. You wear those oversized clothes so they don't rip when you do. Transform. Yeah, transform. Right. No one knew where she was going with this, but Power Loader had a small inkling which he kept to himself. After receiving a nod she continued with a gleam in her eyes only recognized by a few people in the room, and each one shivered, and one of them was a pro. You have to come to my lab. I can hook you up with a few of my babies. Yes, I can make stretchable casual clothes. Or some exoskeleton. Or an invisible changing room or a watch which helps you switch clothes. Or, as she went on with ideas they couldn't be but grateful to her for lowering the morbidity that had encompassed the group. The same couldn't be said for All Might. Midoriya still can't comprehend what's going on around him. He quickly remembers the villain who fought with All Might exactly five years ago, but All Might dismisses him. The punk may have landed some hits, but he couldn't bring me down. Most of the world hasn't heard of this fight. I did everything I could to keep it under wraps. His eyes dropped to the floor for a moment. I'm supposed to be the guy who's always smiling, right? I'm the symbol of peace, people everywhere have to think that I'm never afraid. But honestly, I smile to hide the fear inside. It's just a brave face I put on when the pressure is high. Endeavor was miffed that even he was kept out of such a loop. Though, given his disposition towards the guy, without a binding oath, he might have publicized it just to spite him. Everyone was, simply put, terrified at the mere idea of such a villain existing. To deal such damage to a man who seems nigh invincible. It seemed too horrific to be true. All Might. Aizawa quietly whispered to the man behind him. 
It still gained the attention of the nearby people, some students, teachers, and even Nezu cocked back an ear. That villain you fought, what happened to him? His question went down like a ball of lead. A heavy feeling of dread built in the pits of their gut. I dealt him more damage than he dealt me. I honestly don't expect him to have recovered from them. This was a lie. The results from Namu suggested otherwise, but this wasn't the place to talk about it, at least not yet. I see, yet they didn't actually recover him or his body, did they? At this, all Tashinori could do was nod in resignation. The students seemed more relieved at hearing this, but still, the tension hung in the room. It's alright isn't it guys? I mean, even if he did survive, it's not as if he'd be stupid enough to actually come back out of hiding to face All Might again. If he does, he can just beat him back again. Kaminari asked, his voice getting louder with each sentence. Yeah, he can totally do it, he might have a time limit, but he's still the same All Might. Hagakure pitched in, and will support him all the way. This was Midoriya. Hell yeah, was the phrase that coursed around the room, even the pros joining in. Hell yeah. Present Mike decided that he needed to add to the students' motivation. All Might smiled, an honest smile. He was warmed by the fact that even if somehow he was unable to defeat this evil, he wouldn't be able to win. Because of the heroes in front of him, they would make sure that filth like him would be put down no matter the cost. That doesn't mean that I will give anything less than my all. You may have escaped once, you won't get that chance again he thought with clenched fist and a determined look on the face, missed by all of those around him, except his protege, who matched it with a look of his own. He continued, giving a serious look to Midoriya. Pro heroes are always risking their lives. Some villains just can't be beaten without powers. So no. There was a collective intake of breath at this. The pros knew he said what he needed to say, what was the right thing to do, but it didn't make it any less painful, given what they knew from earlier. The students, though, were not mature enough to comprehend it. Even those like Todoroki who were, couldn't believe that he'd actually say it. I honestly don't think you can become a hero without a quirk. At this bombshell, Midoriya's eyes went as wide as saucers before he went into a state of pseudo-shock. Who? I? See. All Might stood up, and went on if you want to help people you can always become a police officer. They get crap because heroes capture most of the villains but it's a fine profession. Pulling the door open, he gave him one last look. It's not bad to have a dream young man. Just, make sure your dreams are attainable. Realistic. Understand. And with that rhetoric, he walks away. The manner in which he dismissed Midoriya's dream was appalling even to the pros. They knew he had to let him down, but he should have made sure to let him down easy. It was the right thing to do, but he didn't need to be so harsh. Geez, and I thought people told me I was too cold not seeing the irony in his words, and Deva remarked. Before anyone could comment any further two large whacks sounded from behind them and everyone heard a sharp cry from All Might. Recovery Girls Kane and Gran Torino's fist made contact with his head at the same time. Tashinori gave them both an apologetic look, but on seeing the thunderous look on their faces, he started to edge away. People who knew the relationship between them gave a hearty laugh, instantly diffusing the tension in the room. But the two old-timers weren't done with the man. You fool. What were you thinking? Do you need to take the civilian interaction course again? My, my I think all those hits to the head may have dropped a few nuts from your head. Chiyo exclaimed. Before he could answer Gran Torino spoke up. He does. He should have remembered the impact a hero's words can have on people, especially a child who absolutely adores him. I'm sure someone would be willing to take him through the meat grinder again. Aizawa smirked of course, I can always take some time off of my nap. Safety of the world and whatnot. Tashinori was sweating bullets at this point. Everyone began laughing at his demeanor, but Izuku stood up to give his mentor some reprieve. It's alright, it really is. I know it might seem harsh, but he was doing it for my own good. Besides he was cut short by the old man. No son, it was very much not alright. You are a very exceptional person my boy, but this is the stuff villains are made of. It takes less than what you have already experienced this very day to turn people. You have a pure heart, but this oaf doesn't know that yet. He might as well have thrown you into a villain's den. As Izuku tried to defend his mentor again, he was cut off by the man himself. No, young Midoriya. He is right. I shouldn't have let my bitterness at my own condition let me impression the mid of the youth. It was very irresponsible of me, and I am deeply sorry. He was dumbstruck, but when he felt tears fall on his hands, he saw Yuraka was holding onto them, and the tears were hers. Others could be seen around the room, lamenting the stuff their friend had to go through. He couldn't hold back his own tears but made sure to smile, reassuring them more than any words could. All Might realizes he doesn't have the bottles on him now and an explosion nearby grabs both his and Midoriya's attention. Not good. As soon as he hears the explosion, Midoriya perks up a bit, and wonders how it will all go down when he remembers his idol's words. He sinks in on himself and begins walking away slowly. All Might, still in his skinny form, is shown running laboriously towards the scene. A large amount of smoke is seen rising. 
Back at Tatooine Shopping District, people are quickly trying to escape the chaos of flames, smoke and explosions that riddle the area. A bunch of heroes, including Death Arms approach the scene hastily. They see a huge glob of what appears to be slime with grotesque eyes and a large mouth in the middle of the chaos, and what they find chills them to their spines. Amidst the heat, there is a young boy who the villain has taken hostage. Death Arms gets mad and jumps into the fray. How dare you prey on a child? With a cry, he lunges at the villain, only to find his punch absorbed and his hand being sunk into the green goop. The villain smirks as he smack him away. He threatens to snap the boy's neck if the heroes don't stay back. What? The hell? How is he so strong? One of the students exclaims. No one bothers to find out who as they are watching the screen intently. The sinking feeling the pros were feeling when the monster took Midoriya comes back with vengeful force. It's his quirk, isn't it? Bakugus. That's what's causing the destruction. Momo says. Snipe acknowledges it and Cementos explains how it is a two-edged blade. On one hand, it is keeping the villain from truly possessing him. But the collateral is also causing the hero's distress, preventing them from rescuing him. I see no way to overpower him right now. Tiger replies. It would need someone with a solidification, freezing or suction base quirk to do so. Vaporizing him might do the trick, so would teleporting the lad. But no one here is capable of that. Bakugu doesn't stop struggling. You picked the wrong guy to mess with. I'm gonna blow you back to the sewer you came from. Let me GOO. Huge explosions rock the streets again. I've gotta hand it to you man, you never give up. That is totally manly. Kirishima tries to get the room a bit more psyched, but the concern seeping into his voice belies his efforts. Yes, while I do not condone the vulgarity of your words, the sentiments behind them are admirable. Your actions are those of true strength, both of mind and body. How helpful it is, though is another matter indeed. Ada remarks in a wise tone. Bakugu finally cracks. What the hell did you say four eyes? You wanna go right now? He glares at the boy who was sitting a few rows beneath him. The pitying looks he was getting from everyone were too much for him. He didn't need them to see his so weak. See, calm down Kakin. He means well. Midoriya tries to reason with his childhood friend. Bakugu clicks his tongue but settles down anyway. I really hit the jackpot. With a quirk like yours, I can take all might down with one punch. Everyone sweat drops at this, some even performing the fabled anime fall. Man that guy's ego is beyond even Bakugus's. One punch. He'll be lucky to land one in the first place. Mina speaks up. He starts laughing, and even some of the pros chuckle a bit at the villain's presumptuousness. Mount Lady is seen running towards the incident, trying to help out. People cheer at seeing her, some even saying that she could save him. She suddenly stops. I need at least a two-lane road if I'm gonna make my way through here. She exclaims. The boys who were with Bakugu are seen trying to get away from the fire and failing. A wooden hand grabs them and starts running. Kamui Woods is seen running with four people. Fire and wood don't make such a good combination. I'll let someone else stop this guy. The heroes are at a serious disadvantage. None of their quirks are compatible with the situation. Midoriya supplies. He remembers the situation clearly, and seeing it again brings up the emotions he felt that day. Wait, what about that water quirk from earlier? Backdraft. Sato asks. His question is immediately answered. Backdraft is seen using everything he can to control the fire. I've got my hands full. Where are those fire trucks? Can you guys get to him? He asks the other heroes. Death Arms explains the situation regarding the villain's body, and the explosions. We've got to rally and knock him out of the park somehow. The villain has almost completely covered Bakugu by now and launches an attack at the heroes. He heroes realize that none of them have a quirk to stop a villain like that. They decided damage control was the best option until someone with a suitable quirk arrived. Aren't the heroes going to do anything? Kaminari was panicking at the state of things. They, they can't, they can't do it. Gyro says, still digesting that very fact. Wait, didn't All Might save him? Ashido pipes up. Yeah, he did, didn't he? He's going to save the day. Hagakure starts jumping in excitement but is stopped by the tail quirk user at her side. But isn't he out of time? That one question stops everything in the room. Even the teachers cannot figure out how this will play out. Suddenly, Chiyo has an epiphany. So that's where you first overexerted yourself. All Might arrives at the scene. The crowd tries to cheer the heroes on. He realizes that he must have dropped the villain in the air. I was distracted, worried about my time limit. I can't believe I made such a rookie mistake. And after lecturing that kiddo what it takes to be a hero. I'm pathetic. Don't beat yourself up over this you idiot. Aizawa admonished him. You shouldn't have made it, but it happens. More often than not. He thought to himself. He knew exactly how easy it is to be caught up in the moment, and not think ahead. That is why he strived to be so rational and logical in the first place. To make sure and take every variable into account. Midoriya is shown despondently walking while holding the burnt notebook in his hand. His eyes are drawn downwards, and there is no energy in his steps. He remembers all the words that told him not to be hero. We see the pages in his notebook, detailing the heroes. Hemp. What do you know, those notes actually make sense. Everyone was shocked, and Dever actually complimented him. Midoriya, did you seriously call Mount Lady sexy? Siro snickered. Ah, uh, wait, no. It's not like that. I can explain. Midoriya started fumbling in his seat. 
Everyone chuckled at this. He is correct though. That is a valuable asset in a hero's arsenal, be it for popularity, or manipulation of villains. It is a very keen observation, young man. Aizawa bailed his student out. He sees the autograph his hero had left for him. Even All Might said it. A hero needs a quirk. He started sniffling a bit. Don't cry, damn it. Deep down you knew this. All along, his world narrows down into darkness. You've been avoiding reality. That's why you were trying desperately to prove yourself wrong. Don't. One word. Todoroki spoke only a single word, but it had emotions that couldn't be filled in pages. As he looked at the green-haired boy, his first true friend, and saw the despair he must have been through, he felt guilty of treating him the way he did before the tournament. While their suffering wasn't exactly the same, they were companions in despair. He received a heartfelt smile and gave a small one in return. Similar thoughts were running through a violet-haired boy sitting next to him. He looks up when he hears an explosion ring out. Is the fight from earlier still going on? He realizes he had subconsciously walked straight to the conflict. I'll be damned. Fanboying is so innate to him now, he just walks towards danger on a whim. Snipe exclaimed. The class was still feeling a bit down from his words but couldn't see how to help their friend out. He realizes it's the villain from before. He comes to the realization that it was because of him that the villain was free right now. It's my fault. The villain captured a kid. Not looking good. Dissension was sowing through the crowd. How long have they been in there? How can they survive being suffocated so long? The villain is distracted. He has to focus on the heroes. That's why he isn't completely able to capture Bakugou. And his explosions aren't doing him any favors. Shinsu speculates. He receives a few nods of acceptance, but it stills baffles a lot of people. Wait, isn't that the villain All Might was chasing earlier today? People begin to start fretting over his absence and his failure in capturing the villain already. This is the sad truth of heroism. Principal Nezu sighs. You may defeat a hundred villains and save a thousand people, but one slip, and you're in the people's crosshairs. It is difficult, but the people need reassurance from those they look up to. The infallible pedestals they put heroes on to have their perks, but come at a very steep price. The heroes in training realize the meaning behind those words. They silently vow to make sure they never break the trust of the people. I'm the one to blame. He wasted his energy on me. I'm worthless. He can't power up yet, and the heroes can't stop this monster. Clutching at his wound so pathetic. Stop, Midoriya. All Might. The way their friend and mentor were beating each other up over an impossible situation was eating away at the students. It isn't rational to beat yourself up over something out of your control. Aizawa tried his own brand of reassurance. Deku, please don't. Yuraka saw her friend crying again, and couldn't stop herself as she consoled him again. For once, he didn't complain, or freeze up, just took the affection and the reassurance. TCH, that bastard. Deku, Bakugou thought to himself. I'm sorry, so sorry, a disgrace. Help will show up and save the day, I'm sure. I'm not a real hero. That's not true All Might. Midoriya jumped up, with enough conviction in his voice to move a mountain. Someone, a real hero will come soon. Bakugou is still struggling to get the villain off of him. He can't breathe and is fighting with all he can. His eyes are shut tightly. The room is thick with tension that can be cut with a bread knife. Everyone, even those who don't actually know him, are worried for his safety. Wo dot 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 man dot 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 bro, please be alright. Kirishima prays for his friend. For once, he doesn't blow up. It's gonna be fine hair for brains. Bakugu's eyes open and they are filled with honest to god terror. Those red orbs, which shone in the nightmares of so many people, are for probably the first time in his life, showing so much emotion, and it was a palpable fear. No, damn it, somebody do something. Ugh. Frustration runs in the room, but for only a moment. The very next thing they see sends all but two people into shock. As soon as their eyes meet, something snaps inside Midoriya. The book drops and he rushes past the line of people and heroes. All Might and the heroes are stunned by this. The same can be said for the auditorium in general. The only people who did know were All Might, Bakugou and Midoriya himself. What the hell? Similar cries rang throughout the room. So, he's been a problem child from all the way back then, huh? This kid. Aizawa had that crazed smile he did from the quirk enhancement test. It creeped the hell out of his ashy, who was right next to him. Wait, isn't he quirkless? Shinsu's question turned that shock into fear. Fear for the safety of both their classmates. Even the pros were discussing this. Is his quirk the type that will activate in a moment of stress? Shino Sasaki, also known as Mandalay, asked. It didn't do so when he was attacked himself earlier though. Ragdoll replied. Besides, isn't he too old for it to manifest? Hound Dog remarked. Not this brat again. The slime villain exclaims. Deku. Midoriya is still running towards the villain amidst the chaos. What am I doing? Why am I running? Why can't I stop? Whoa. You mean to say? His body reacted on instinct. To run towards the danger. Siro shouted out loud. Hey, he moved to rescue him. With all the crap he's put him through, he still went to him. Kaminari spoke, his voice laced with disbelief. Deku, please be okay. Yuraka couldn't condemn his actions, after all, she'd been on the receiving end of it too. Todoroki was honestly, not surprised one bit by this. It was just such a, Midoriya thing to do. What do I do, what would a hero do right now? 
he suddenly remembers page 25 from his notebook, detailing the lacquered chain prison technique of Kamui Woods. As soon as he recalls it, he slings his backpack off in one smooth motion and swings it as hard as he can aimed at the villain's supposed face. A book falls out of it and hit him in the eye. It worked. That's the stuff manliness is made of. Hiroshima exploded, pride flowing through him at his friend's actions. That attack made the villain lose focus and let his grip loose on Bakugu, allowing him to breathe. With a cry of K-A-C-C-H-A-N he begins clawing at the goop surrounding his friend. You already know that won't work you idiot. Why are you doing it? Bakugu scream. I had to do something Kakan. And I was panicking, what was I supposed to do? Izuku scream right back, remembering what he felt at that time. The class watched this back and forth and couldn't believe their ear. Anything else G-O-D-D-A-M-N-I-T. T-C-H. Blasted nerd. Deku. Why are you here? Bakugu asked. I don't know. My legs. They just started. Moving. Izuku replied while digging away at the slime. Unbeknownst to him, Izuku had gained the respect of every single pro hero in attendance. The radiating respect for his protege made All Might smile. You see young Midoriya, everyone will realize it someday. You are already a great hero. Older Midoriya's voice is heard in the background. I don't know why I did what I did as he says this, scenes from his childhood begin playing in a sped up mode. Sorry kid. Dot 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 when they could have someone like me. He's the coolest in the universe. You can't be a hero. Maybe it was the look on his face. Midori. Ashido sniffled, breaking down at those snippets. You're really strong you know. Ribbit Su piped in. Not. Gina. Cry. So cool. With tears streaming down his face and snot flowing from his nose, he musters up the biggest smile he could. It is a watery smile, but a smile nonetheless. K. Kakan. I couldn't just stand there and watch you die. His words jerking All Might into wonder. He's. He's trying to emulate you. Thirteen is gobsmacked at the young boy's determination. Yes he is. All Might said with all the pride he had for his student. You go Deku. Your Raka got the ball rolling. Yeah. You're the dude. No, he's the man. Kiro. He's Izuku Midoriya. One by one, everyone in the room started cheering the lad up, and he couldn't feel anything but gratitude for their trust in him. Thank you. I have to do something. As he thought this, steam began rolling off of his body, and the arm holding onto the pole began enlarging. No matter the cost. All Might was here. The monster raises an arm to strike Midoriya down. And I'm done playing with you. Seeing this, the heroes rush in to try and at least save Midoriya. As the hand comes down, a large explosion accompanies it. There is naught but silence in the room. Midoriya. Ada can't believe his eyes. Deku. Your Raka is in tears. No. All Might, where is he? Damn it you oaf, where are you? The smoke clears away to show a cowering, but alive Izuku Midoriya. I really am pathetic. All Might. All Might is standing there, in all his muscular glory, blocking the blow meant for the boy. Cheers rang throughout the room at All Might's appearance. Some of them were even shedding some tears of relief at seeing the day somewhat saved by the symbol of peace. Chiyo berated Tashinori a bit for overexerting himself, but didn't have her heart in it as she knew it was absolutely necessary. I told you the traits that make. A great champion. But I see now that I wasn't living up to my own ideals. And broke free of the villain's grasp with that last cry. Midoriya and Bakugu stare at their idol with wide eyes. He grabs onto Bakugu's hands and with blood flowing through his mouth like a faucet, he prepares one punch. Damn you all might. D-E-T-R-O-O-O-I-I-I-T-T. S-M-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
but he was sworn by interviewers. I didn't want to interrupt. As he goes on with his inner rambling he is interrupted with the cry of Deku. Bakugu is seen panting and running to catch up to him. Wait, don't tell me. Ajiro begins. Hey, hey, he's not gonna do it, right? Siro weakly tries to rebuke. He's, he's not gonna apologize, right? Mina stutters. Oh, contrire, looks like Monsieur Bakugu just might. Manami. Ayama chimes in. Nah, he wouldn't. Even my babies can't possibly get him to do that. Hatsum said with confidence. Even Shinsu slightly doubted the strength of his quirk to accomplish that particular feat. Listen, I would never ask a weakling like you to help me. Don't think you can look down on me. I was fine by myself. You're just a quirkless failure who wouldn't even cut it as a stupid cop. As he goes on to finish his rant and starts walking away, Midoriya gives him a deadpan look and sweat drops. What was that all about? The present Midoriya copies his previous reaction, along with Todoroki, Ada and most of the teachers. The others perform an anime fall at their classmates' reaction. Come on man, give him a break. He just saved your life you know Kirishima says while rubbing his neck. Bakugu grunts, but doesn't disagree. He didn't completely believe his own words back then. But seeing it now, made him realize he was slimed in her ID Deku hadn't intervened. Not that he would ever say it out loud. Right. With shiny eyes, Midoriya starts thinking to himself. Kakin is right though. It's not like I did anything to actually help today. But, at least I tried. Letting his hair cover his eyes, he starts walking again. Don't sell yourself short, kid. The old man that he didn't recognize shouted at him. The geezer is correct. While pathetic to watch, your efforts weren't entirely wasted. Izuku and Todoroki were shocked. Did Endeavor just compliment him? All Might suddenly appears with a shout of I am here, which startles Izuku into screaming. Geez, All Might, do you have to do that? At this, the man in question sheepishly smiles. All Might, why are you here? How do you get rid of all those reporters? At his questions, All Might starts laughing quite boisterously. I stand for justice, not sound bites, because I, I am all MIG GHHRK. And he ends his statement with a spray of blood. After Midoriya freaks out at his abrupt transformation, All Might coughs and wipes the blood off his mouth and starts speaking. Young man, I came here to thank you, and also to discuss your question from earlier. Midoriya is surprised. If you hadn't told me about your life, if you hadn't run in there, I would have been a worthless bystander watching from the crowd. So thanks. Izuku insists that it was his fault to begin with, but All Might has none of it. The class looked fondly upon their friend. The pros however were having another discussion. He seems to have no self-respect, no sense of self-worth. So, submissive. Midnight said with a sultry tone at the end. Yeah, I think he should have a talk with someone, not necessarily a professional, just a talk with someone he trusts. He needs to know that he's important too. Hisashi, in a moment of insight, remarked. Aizawa looked at his friend with raised eyebrows, looking more awake than he has done in days. Yes, and that Bakugu kid needs a serious dose of humble pie in him. Lunch Rush put in a word himself. I'm not done kid. You told me you didn't have a power, so when I saw this quirkless boy try to save a life, it inspired me to act too. Midoriya is now looking directly at him. All Might goes on, there are stories about every hero. How they became great. Most have one thing in common. The scene flashes back to earlier. Their bodies move before they could think, almost on their own. Everyone in the room is smiling at this point. Izuku begins to tear up, soaking up everything that was said to him, savoring the moment. The cherry blossom is shedding its flowers. The setting sun in the background is throwing light and making shadows on the sidewalk. Izuku is shaking while tears collect in his eyes. For some reason, I remembered my mother's words from that night. I'm sorry Izuku. He can feel the memories hitting him like a truck, every syllable cutting his heart. He goes to his knees from the sheer overload of emotions he's feeling. And today, that's what happened to you. He squeezes his eyes shut as the waterworks roll down his face. His hands are clutching at his chest. The usually stoic Shinsu has actual tears flowing down his cheeks. He remembers the verbal tormenting he was subjected to, and knew it was way worse for Izuku. To hear such a thing from his idol, he knew more than anyone how it was making him feel. I, I can't help it anymore. Please say it. Kirishima nearly begged. Yeah, sniff. Come on all might. Ashido added. He's almost completely on the ground at this point. You never told me mom. Back then, the thing I wanted you to say, the words I needed to hear. Young man, you too can become a hero. Not a single eye was left dry, everyone, and I mean everyone was feeling the tightening of their chest. Endeavor had turned his face away, not unlike Bakugu, who was looking downwards. Nezu was letting a soul tear flow down his cheek. All Might was regarding his words from earlier, not knowing the actual magnitude of the impact his words had on his student. Young Midoriya, I seriously need this music now. Gyro tried to lighten the atmosphere. As the frame was frozen at that particular scene, the older Midoriya keeps on speaking. Dreams can become a reality. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, this is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero. And with that bombshell, the episode ended. Everyone froze in their positions, no matter how awkward they were. Ms. Oracle had sunk to the floor once again in her resting state. Not a sound was made as everyone digested that huge piece of information. The silence was broken by none other than the undeterred Mei Hatsum. 
Wee wow wow wow. All right. So, first place. You are not getting out of my sights now. I'll be sure to hook you up with the best of my babies, and everyone will know how effective they are. Greatest hero, huh? Surprisingly, Todoroki did not feel even an ounce of bitterness or jealousy towards his friend. Once more it seemed so natural, like it was the only reasonable conclusion. D-A-M-N-I-T was all Bakugu was able to say before Midnight got up from her place from behind him and knocked him out cold. Looks like you chose well Tashinori. Gran Torino grunted, a grin adorning his features. Endeavor had a blank look on his face, but he didn't say anything out loud, neither positive nor negative. The Pussycats did not know the boy well enough, but seeing his story, they could not find a fault with his ascension to that rank. Congrats Deku. You're gonna make it. That's so awesome. Your Raka was gushing. Midoriya, who was still in shock with the developments, just soaked it all in. He was going to do it. He would master his mentor's power. He would achieve his goal. And he was determined, now more than ever, to make it a reality. Some of the students were a bit jealous, but they decided to bury it in favor of enjoying their classmates' success. Yeah, you go man. Kirishima exclaimed. Ribbit. Good for you Midoriya. Su chimed. Hey, don't forget us from all the way up there. Hagakure chimed. Hey Midoriya. At his voice, the class quietened a bit. Aizawa continued, don't let this get to your head. To achieve this, you will still have to work beyond your limits. To embody plus ultra. Midoriya gave a determined nod in his direction. All Might suddenly went into his buff form. Ha 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 ha. Young Midoriya, it warms my heart to see you reach such heights. I sure hope I'm around to see that day. Without thinking, he kept going on. As my successor, I hope you can stretch the limits of your quirk even further. When the room fell silent once more, he realized what he had just said. Oh crap. Previously on TSPF, All Might suddenly went into his buff form. Ha 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 ha. Young Midoriya, it warms my heart to see you reach such heights. I sure hope I'm around to see that day. Without thinking, he kept going on. As my successor, I hope you can stretch the limits of your quirk even further. When the room fell silent once more, he realized what he had just said. Oh crap. Everyone stared at All Might with shocked looks on their faces. He can't be serious. Were the general thoughts running through almost everyone's minds? All Might had beads of sweat running down his massive forehead as he tried to hold onto his iconic grin. Gran Torino just bowed his head a bit in exasperation. Nezu was chuckling a bit to himself and Aizawa was giving All Might a look that had made many a seasoned criminal piss their pants. Even the pussycats were giving him some weird looks. Playing favorites already are we? Midnight asked with her usual playfulness, though there was an undercurrent of seriousness in her tone. Izuku panicked slightly, but he realized that everyone was about to find out in a bit anyway. A look of resignation flashed through his face but went largely unnoticed by everyone in lieu of the dumb look on Bakugo's face. That, that, shitty, useless, corkless, D.K.U. He seemed to be lost. Endeavor's eyes narrowed a bit at this announcement. So, you have similar powers, and he is mentoring you personally enough to call you his successor. You, boy, are getting more intriguing by the minute. An unnoticeable smile drew onto his face. Kaminari tried to break everyone out of their stupor. He hey. He can't mean it literally, can he? He chuckled nervously. Momo grabbed at this chance to rationalize the situation a bit. Yes, after all, we just found out that Midoriya will become the greatest hero, so it is quite natural that he will also be the number one hero, maybe even the next symbol of peace. Yes, that is what All Might means. Yeah, yeah Momo is right. That makes complete sense. Mina cheered a bit. A short gasp from Todoroki brought the room's attention onto him. Are we really, and I mean absolutely sure that Midoriya is not All Might's son? I mean, children are often considered their parents' successors with respect to their careers. He trailed off, completely disregarding his own father's presence. Todoroki, how many times have I told you this? All Might is not my father. Midoriya hissed out while trying to cover his growing blush. All Might blushed a bit, again with the idea that he was somehow young Midoriya's father was somewhat, uncomfortably appealing to him. He shrugged those thoughts away vigorously. He dissuaded the dual quirk user of this absurd notion but was still stuck with the successor issue. Something had slipped his mind, he just couldn't figure out what. May kept opening and closing her mouth at short intervals, as if she was coming with theories but couldn't get herself to voice any outright. Shinsu had a contemplative look on his face. He had the answer somewhere. Unbeknownst to him, he was sharing the same thoughts with a possibly broken explosive. His quirk. Yuraka threw a glance at the green-headed teen next to her, and saw that instead of the general skittishness, he had a fearful look on his face. She couldn't help but be a bit concerned. Ada too was looking at his friend for an explanation, but all he got was a shake of the head, delaying the explanation. I hope you guys forgive me. Aizawa also caught on to his students' unusual behavior and figured something out. All Might, have you explained this successor business to Midoriya already? He asked tiredly drawing a hand over his face. Some of the pros caught on to what he was saying. A light bulb went off in his head at Aizawa's statement. Of course, I told young Midoriya all the details of my condition and quirk on the same day. Well, not all. His grin became more natural, and he gave his colleague a thumbs up, which irritated said colleague to no end. 
Uh, yes Aizawa. I nearly forgot this tiny detail myself. Listen up, everybody. I think it would be better if we waited for the past me to explain it to young Midoriya. That way, you get to hear it exactly like I said to before. Yes. All Might ended with his carefree laugh, his grin not as pained or forced as before. Izuku sighed, as his mentor realized what was going to happen. Even the old guy let out a laugh at the number one hero's antics. As soon as Oracle was sitting upright, everyone rushed to their previous positions and the screen flickered on once again. The screen shows All Might towering against a blank background. The sun is shown to be blocked by his figure, his shadow cast large upon the floor. Older Midoriya is heard speaking. The world's most popular hero. All Might. Age, unknown. Quirk, unidentified. He broke onto the hero scene and was an immediate hit thanks to his amazing abilities. The scene shows All Might's poster with a lot of his merchandise, magazine reports and newspapers flashing by. Ever since he appeared, crime rates have drastically decreased, his very existence acting as a deterrent to any would-be villains. A statistic from the National Police Agency investigation is shown, graphically displaying the decrease of crime rates. Wow, I knew he had an effect. But this much. Pixie Bob slowly whistled. Yeah, it's staggering, to say the least. Mandalay nodded. The students looked on in awe at the numbers, the magnitude of his presence being felt all across the room. Even Endeavor couldn't scoff at that. The world's a safer place. They don't just call him the symbol of peace. It's what he is. A statue of All Might in the background is being admired by a kid. And this pillar of justice said to me. The screen glows white before shifting to Midoriya on his knees, crying his eyes out in front of the man. Young man, you too can become a hero. He remembers all the taunts, all the jeers, all the names he's ever been called. How every single person he ever met had put his dream down, and clutched at his heart. His tears keep on falling. I can't get over this man. How did you keep going on? Toru sniffled. Midoriya, I, there is nothing more to say. You are the stronger man. I am honored that you count me as your friend. Ida exclaimed, a faraway look in his eyes. Todoroki and Shinsu silently nodded at the team next to them. No more needed to be said aloud. Bakugo looked away. I needed someone to tell me that, and then, the person I admire most in this world did. The cherry blossoms flew down against the setting sun. I honestly never expected to hear those words. Much less from him. Deku, if you don't believe it then I'll say it again. You can become a hero. You already are a hero. At least, to me. Yuraka trailed off uneasily, blushing a bit at her forwardness, but not regretting it one bit. She knew it was needed, and she would give him all the support he needed. Ribbit. She's right Midoriya. You're one to me too. Asui said. Yeah, me too. Minda added with his usual slur. You are one for me as well. Todoroki stated with a firm voice. You guys, thank you. Izuku replied, with a smile and tears falling off his face. Everyone present grinned at the young hero in front of them, not believing for one second that he would not reach his goal. I deem you worthy of my power. My quirk is yours to inherit. All Might exclaimed, his hands spread wide. Midoriya looked up at him, fluid still hanging off his eyes and nose, shocked beyond belief. His eyes suddenly go blank as he tilts his head. The opening begins to play. Nezu sat back in his seat, folding his arms across his chest and closed his eyes. To the untrained eye, it would look as if he was settling down for a nap, but he was just making himself unapproachable. His ears were still cocked. Midoriya started fidgeting with his hands and looked down towards the ground. The class and the pros couldn't decide who they wanted to stare at, the deceptively frail-looking blonde or the nervous greenhead. They decided on doing both at once. Inherit, was the only word Endeavor could say. His eyes were wide, his composure momentarily lost. What, do, you, mean? Aizawa glared at All Might, each word marked with an increase in volume. All Might tried to shrink in on himself. It, it's not possible. Is it? Someone asked the blatantly obvious thing, but it needed to be cleared up anyways. After receiving an imperceptible nod from the old man, they let out a collective shriek, well more like a growl in Bakugo's case. You, you, you damn nerd. You got his power. Why? Bakugo exploded. Even in his shock, Kirishima still managed to hook his hands underneath Bakugo's and instinctively hardened. Midoriya started to edge away, only to be caught by Yuraka. Deku, what's going on? She asked fearfully. Todoroki and Momo were both silent, trying to assimilate this information. Ada was no better, this went against everything he had ever learnt. Mei had a gleeful grin on her face and Shinsu let his hair cover his eyes. Mina had become a broken record. Kaminari looked like he had unleashed his quirk at full power, and then some more. The rest were looking around for some information. But, didn't we already consider this? Toru exclaimed. We, did. Mina asked weakly, the information still not truly digesting. Kiro. Yes, during the bus ride to the USJ, Asui said, a look of recognition dawning on her face. But how? Doesn't his body always blow up when he tries to use it? Shoji said with relative calmness. Hum, could it be? Hey, kid, is it because you can't control it yet? Snipe asked from behind the students. After getting no response from either person, he gave a frustrated sigh and waited for the pandemonium to calm down. The pussycats could only bounce their focus from one party to another. They did not understand what the hell was going on, not one bit. It was somewhat pissing them off. It was Todoroki who calmed everyone down. 
It will do us no good trying to hound them for answers. I am sure All Might will tell Midoriya about it. I suggest we wait for that. Nezu smiled and got up. I agree. Let us wait patiently to ask our questions. I am sure they will be answered soon enough. As he turned back in his seat, everyone grudgingly got back to their own, and glared at the screen as if it would make the opening go faster. Izuku looks up at All Might with confusion all over his face. Wait, what do you mean inherit? Inherit what? At this All Might starts laughing. Ah ha ha. You should see your face right now. Don't worry, I'm not gonna force this thing on you. Really. As I recall, a certain someone almost fell into a river when they first heard about such a thing. Isn't that right, Toshi? Gran Torino smirked at his student who was looking sheepish. So, you're saying someone could force a quirk onto someone? Ragdoll asked. At this, All Might's face took on a grim look. He hesitantly nodded, but this sent shivers down all of their spines. Imagine being forced to take another quirk. Midoriya remembered his discussion with All Might, and secretly hoped that everyone did not get to know about him, because if they did, they wouldn't let him out of their sights. All Might walks up to Midoriya, pointing up towards the sky he takes on a serious tone. Listen well young man, this is your choice. Bringing his finger down to point towards him he shouts, blood spraying form his mouth. Do you want to accept my awesome power or not? Some of the teachers and pros facebombed themselves. Endeavor just shook his head and All Might got another box on his ears courtesy of Gran Torino. Even the students, who were uncharacteristically quiet sweat dropped at the theatrics of their teacher. What is he talking about? Midoriya thought to himself. What is this? All Might wiped the blood off of his mouth. There are a couple of things you should know about my abilities. He began in a somber manner. Newspaper clippings flash in the background. Journalists always guess my quirk is super strength, or some kind of invulnerability. When people ask in interviews, I always make a joke or dodge the question. It's because the world needs to believe that their symbol of peace is just a natural-born hero like any of them but I'm not. There's nothing natural about my ability. He spread his arms and threw back his head. I wasn't born with this power. It's a sacred torch, passed on to me by someone else. Whoa. Siro started. So you're saying. Hiroshima continued, his hands clenched by his side. No, it can't be. Bakugo got up from his seat, eyes wide. Some of the people covered their faces in shock, trying to assimilate the situation. All Might was quirkless too. Gyro stuttered out. The silence was more deafening than any screams could be. Aizawa did not like where this was heading. Before he could say anything though, Shinsu got up from his seat and grabbed everyone's attention. It doesn't matter. Not one bit. So what if he was quirkless? Nobody in the world can come close to what he does. He is the symbol of peace, the number one hero. All of us have grown up on his legend, his stories. Doesn't really matter how he became who he is. He ended with a rhetoric. He knew very well that someone's quirk, or lack thereof didn't make the person. It was their action and All Might did not need to prove himself to anyone. Endeavor quietly looked on at the situation that was unfolding. His pride was hurt by the fact that his rival was quirkless, yet he still surpassed him. But his respect for the man grew even further. Shoto raised his voice to I agree. It is because of him the world is the safe place it is. He is our hero. Midoriya gave a nod to his mentor, shining his brightest smile. He knew things would be alright. TCH, I can't believe I'm saying this. The fucking extras are right. He's all might. No matter how he looks, or how he came here, what matters is that he's still there. You better believe it. Shouts of agreement and support rang throughout the room as the students resolved to make their teacher believe that his quirkless past was nothing to be ashamed of. Midoriya still can't believe what he is hearing. Someone gave you this quirk. No way. Yes way. And you're next. I can give you my abilities. Midoriya starts flailing his arms around. Wait. Hold on. This is a lot to process. An online forum is shown where people are discussing the same thing. It's true that there's a lot of debate as to what your quirk actually is. Nobody's ever figured it out. It's one of the world's greatest mysteries. People are constantly talking about it online. The gravity of the knowledge they now possessed was sinking into the people present, student and pro alike. One of the world's greatest mysteries, a deeply guarded secret. They were now privy to something akin to a global treasure. They resolved to make sure it stays hidden. Midoriya entered into a trademark mumble spree, the world around him going blank as the word mutter encompassed everything. Well the idea of passing on a quirk or inheriting it doesn't make any sense to me I've never heard anything like that. Before powers are supposed to be unique to each individual I mean since the first superpowers no one's ever been able to give someone else their power like a present that's crazy. If this is true it causes us to rethink everything we about quirks and All Might looks dumbly at the boy still on his knees. Who? Deku. I think you should look for some help in getting a hold onto this habit of yours. Your Raka giggled a bit at something so normal for the green-haired boy. Damn idiot, can't even take All Might seriously. Katsuki said in a clipped tone, still fuming at the implications of the situation. While I don't condone his habit, Midoriya does have a point. This does lead us to rethink the entire behavior of Quirks. The possibilities are endless. Yeirazu trails off. Mei looks at her and instantly knows a conversation with her is due. Izuku just chuckles uncomfortably, having long abandoned the practice of defending his habit. Seriously, it is annoying for him too. Looks like you're overthinking this whole inheriting thing. 
He sharply yells to get the boy out of his trance. Stop and ERDING out. You have to adjust your reality and accept this new truth. I can transfer my quirk to someone else. And that's just one facet of my secret abilities. He continued with exaggerated motions. There's more. Real smart, you blockhead. Turn the lad's world upside down in a moment's notice why don't you? Recovery girl frowned. Yes, a gentler approach would have been better ectoplasm added. But, I, All Might tried and failed to defend himself. The true name of my power is one for all. One, four, oh. Izuku slowly repeats it. The screen goes black as it tries to illustrate All Might's words. A small speck of light beams towards a point, colliding with it, only to increase with each point it gathers. Yes, one person improves the power then hands it off to another person. Each particle collected adds a different color to the beam as it speeds towards the other, still growing. It continues to grow as it's passed along. It is this cultivated power that allows me to save those who are in need of a hero. All Might clenches his fist. The truth behind my strength. Wow. That's just. Awesome. Kaminari mutters. It keeps growing. Todoroki whispers to himself. So much power. Everyone's eyes are wide. Midoriya is still distressed. But why would you choose to give me a gift like that? What if I can't live up to it? All Might explains I was on a long hunt for a worthy successor. And then, I watched you jump into action as the rest of us stood idly by. An image of Midoriya running is shown. You may just be a corkless fanboy, but you tried to save that kid. You acted like a hero. Everyone couldn't help but be a bit more impressed with their classmate again. Sure, they were all training to be heroes, but the way he did it, made it seem so shallow in comparison. It might have been the music playing in the background, but everyone sat a bit straighter, eyes determined. They would uphold the standards All Might stood by, that Midoriya stands by. Izuku's eyes teared up a bit, threatening to overflow. All Might tries to lighten the mood, asking Midoriya to cry lesser. He said so much to encourage me. He even told me the secret behind his powers. Is this? Is this what I've been waiting for all these years? How can I turn him down? Wiping his tears dry, he stands up. His face set with a glint of determination. Okay I'll do it. Yes. Instantly. Damn, Midoriya. Kirishima whistled. That was hardcore. Ida smiled, this was his friend, and he was proud to say so. Looking at Izuku, one would see an identical look on his face. All Might. Don't you worry. I won't let you down. Todoroki just put a hand on his shoulder. Your Raka beamed her brightest smile. They would help him in his endeavor. They may be rivals, but they're friends first. Gran Torino gave an approving nod, but he smirked, realizing the amount of work the boy must have had to do, given the time remaining for the exam. No reluctance. That's exactly how I figured you'd respond. All Might smiled. But it wasn't that simple. Receiving All Might's power turned out to be no easy task. As I'd soon find out. The title screen pops up. Episode 3, Roaring Muscles. Go figure you idiot, what did you think? It would be as easy as popping something in your mouth and be done with it. Damn nerd. Bakugo ended with a click of his tongue. He didn't realize how close he'd come to the mark as Midoriya turned green at the memory. Deku, was it really that rough? You look sick just thinking about it. Yuraka asked with concern in her voice. Yeah, don't sound too good either. Gyro grimaced. One downside of her quirk was that she could hear internal body movements if the subject was close enough in a quiet environment. Two. No. I mean, the training was hard, believe me, but that isn't what bothered me. He replied. Then what is it man? Sato inquired. He'd seen Midoriya work out before, and face had been knocked off his socks. So if there was something worse than a workout he found hard. He shuddered at the thought. I, who, think it's best if you saw it yourself. Midoriya trailed off. The scene shifts to Dagaba Municipal Beach Park, early in the morning two days later. The sound of a young boy grunting with effort is heard. Hey, I know that beach. Hatsum suddenly exclaimed. Me too. My parents used to go there, before it started to become a dump. Hagakure exclaimed. I thought it was always a dump, seeing the amount of trash that's there in that place. Ajiro added. No, I think it's because of some currents depositing the trash dumped into the sea that floats back to this particular area. Momo explained. What are you doing here Midoriya? Kaminari asked. Midoriya is shown using a rope to try and pull a fridge as hard as he can, with All Might seated atop it in his buff form. All Might taunts him a bit to get him moving. People move these every day you know. Most of them don't have any super strength. He says with his usual enthusiasm. Well, yeah but, there's an extra 600 pounds with you sitting on top of it. Izuku replies a bit quietly. Nah, I've lost weight, so I'm down to 560 these days, in this form at least. Everyone sweat drops at his explanation. Sure, that's a lot of help. I heard that some local kid and a blonde man were seen cleaning up the beach. Some newspapers even reported this incident. Shoji stated. Recognition dawned on the teacher's eyes. Don't tell me. You made him. Present Mike stated more than he asked. Aizawa smirked underneath his wrappings. Izuku asked why he's dragging trash across the beach. All Might gave a laugh, discreetly taking pictures. Take a look at yourself. You're not ready for my power. He said in a mocking tone. At this, Mina made eye contact with All Might, who had shrunken down some time ago. No, I am not a pervert. All Might said fiercely. Then why? Toru begun to ask only to be cut off by Tiger. B and A. Kirishima recognized the term. Oh definitely B and A. 
All Might nodded while grinning. Izuku started freaking out at this. He started screaming. All Might explained that he was talking about his body. My quirk, one for all is a whole lot to handle. The combined physical ability of everyone who's ever used it creates a hurricane of pure force. An unprepared body cannot fully inherit it. An image of Izuku's limbs being blown off is shown. Your arms and legs would shoot off if you tried to. Leading to Izuku freaking out again. He rubs his arms and realizes that this whole thing is like an extreme workout for him. With All Might as his trainer. Whoa eh. Jim training with All Might. Man I'd kill for that stuff. Kirishima was getting pumped up. He was a sucker for good workout. But imagine if they miscalculated. Midoriya blowing up like an overstuffed doll. Dirarar. Not a great picture. Kaminari did not see that coming. The idiot has one job to do. If he doesn't do it correctly, it's his fucking problem. Bakugo spat. But wouldn't using an actual gym be better? It would be easier and more precise than hauling trash, wouldn't it? Shoji commented. Yeah. I could totally build some specified babies to enhance your training. May added, not realizing that she wouldn't probably have such resources before UA. Torino smiled at his student. He knew the other reason. You got it. But there's another reason too. I did a little online research yesterday. Turns out this part of the beach used to be beautiful. But it's been a total mess for the last few years. Midoriya explains the ocean current theory. That's what I said. Toru piped up. People these days are so selfish. Instead of helping to solve the problem, they add to it. Shameful. Aizawa added, earning a nod from almost everyone. Heroes these days are all about showing off and capturing flashy villains. Things were different before quirks. Service is what mattered. Back then, heroes were those who helped the community. Even if it was kinda boring. He kept crushing the fridge until it was no bigger than a sheet. At the last moment, he pushed hard enough to blow the trash around him away. Wow. Did not see that coming from you. Aizawa was impressed. The showboat actually did something more. All Might. You're not even trying are you? Someone asked, not getting a reply. You'll restore the coastline for this entire section of the beach. That is the first step on your path young man, towards being a hero. All Might explained. Izuku is stunned as he looks around. Looking at all the trash, he can't help but exclaim at the impossibility of the situation. That's too much. Mina shouted. Yeah man. And you didn't even have a lot of time. Kirishima stated. Wait a second. The kid's here isn't he? Ectoplasm's eyes widened a bit. Oh yahh. For once, Mike realized what was going on. The students who realized this were too stunned to point it out. Young Midoriya, you wanna go to UA? Right. All Might questioned. Yeah, of course. You went there, so it must be the best school around, right? A small blush creeps up on his face. It's a long shot, but I'm gonna shoot for the moon. UA. You've got a lot of spirit fanboy. But, as I mentioned before heroing isn't easy to do without a quirk. It's not fair, but that's the reality. And UA. Is the hardest hero course to get into. All Might said gravely. So that means. That I have to prepare my body for your quirk really fast. UA. S exam is in 10 months. Izuku finished his mentor's sentence. All Might pulled out a set of papers. Not to worry kid. I got you covered. With the help of my handy aim to pass, American dream plan. Present Mike fell onto the floor, he just couldn't stop laughing. Seriously. Was the only thing Pixie Bob could say. I think it's kinda cute. Ragdoll chuckled. The students were performing an anime fall. They couldn't take this. The schedule detailed every detail of Midoriya's life. Sleep patterns, recovery, and food. Meal plans and exercises were also detailed. It was nothing short of grueling. All Might whispers the difficulty of the plan into Midoriya's ear. Midoriya looks shaken at it, but agrees with a determined heart. I have to work harder than anyone else to get in, so what choice do I have, right? Just like that, I began 10 months of absolute hell. Sacker Blue, did Monsieur Midoriya just say what I heard? Ayama asked incredulously. If you're saying it's hell. Maina gulped. He wasn't one for really hard work, and he'd seen Midoriya sometimes. For him to say so, the implications were not lost on anyone. The scene shifts, All Might, in the same outfit as before, but in his skinny form is urging Midoriya on, as the boy I question drags a set of lockers. He starts carrying stuff around. I'm using different muscle groups depending on the size and shape of the trash I'm hauling. He falls onto his face, but gets up and keeps going. Jairo was looking a bit distressed. What's wrong? Kaminari asked the girl next to him. That track. It's so damn good. She shouted. Jairo rarely shouted, maybe because of her quirk sensitivity, but when she did, it was serious. I know right. Hiroshima jumped up when he said this. It's like I can't stay seated. I just have to move, my body won't allow me to ignore this. I'm pumped. He started jumping in his spot. I agree, this is resonating with my dark side, urging it to come out, to twist and meld with it. Takoyami supplied. This is so lit. I hope we can somehow get this. This is so awesome. Mina added her worth too. At Midoriya's junior high, in class, the teacher is talking about the history of quirks, but Midoriya looks completely drained. So tired. Can't focus. He is shown trying to create a modified plan for himself. He starts muttering out calculations and numbers, determining how to effectively finish the job a week before. That is some. Really good quick math Deku. Could you teach me? Your Raka giggled but got serious by the end. Quite impressive dedication, but why are you modifying the plan? 
Ida asked, not liking where this was going. He didn't. Todoroki closes his eyes as he sighs. Endeavor grunts in the background. Gran Torino picked up on his words, and so did All Might. You bet your sweet behind he did. He started chuckling with his student. I can't believe it. The little kitty is going to do more work. Pixie Bob exclaimed with a smirk. Oh no. Mandalay shook her head, knowing where this was headed. His muttering creeps the class out. His teacher snaps him out of it by giving him a knock on his head using his extendable hands. He asks him to pull himself together, as he needed to study to get into UA. As well. Uncharacteristically, Bekugo ignores Midoriya. Midoriya is pushing tires on the beach again, this time, dragging them through the sand. It's a better workout that way. All Might answered the unasked question. A blood-spitting All Might is shown pushing Midoriya to run across the beach. Back home, Midoriya shows his mom the plan, asking for a bigger dinner. He eats an amount fit for an entire family on his own. He's shown studying at his desk past two in the morning. Where did you put all that food, Midoriya? May asked, feeling up the guy. She was pleasantly surprised at what she found, as Izuku went ramrod stiff at the proximity. He missed Uraraka pouting and frowning a bit at the support course prodigy. Todoroki, however, didn't. He smiled a bit. No wonder the guy's smart. I mean, look at the amount of work he's doing. On top of that insane workout regimen too. Kaminari said, looking put off as hell. He knew he was sort of a slacker, half-assing his studies. But looking at Midoriya, he couldn't help but feel as if he was half-assing hero training as well. Unbeknownst to him, others were having similar thoughts as well. It continued in a similar fashion, him working out, studying, being out of it, just working on autopilot for most of the time. It was eat, workout, study, barely sleep, repeat. He worked so hard that he puked, All Might comforting him. He swam as some fangirls surrounded a buff All Might in a lifeguard suit. At home, he's seen lifting heavy dumbbells. He's, he's completely overdoing it. Shoji remarked. It can't be good, overworking your body is counterproductive if not outright harmful to you. Ajira wisely remarked. It was something his martial arts master had taught him. All Might, did you have to? Ribbit. Sue asked. Nobody needed to point out what she was asking about. Of course I did. A hero should always try and make their fans happy. It is a very important part of being a hero. But it was also so that they wouldn't notice that I was training young Midoriya here. All Might replied. Midoriya is shown hauling trash off into some trailers, to take them away for appropriate disposal. At school, he's shown using grip strengthener while writing in class. Against the sunset, Midoriya in a green tracksuit is shown carrying All Might in his hero form, clenching his teeth with the effort. It is autumn now, and the leaves are falling gracefully off the trees. In the middle of the park, All Might is shown riding a Segway in his true form wearing a overcoat alongside Midoriya, who is running while carrying a mini fridge. Suddenly, the world becomes blurry for him and a thud is heard. Damn. Honestly, I didn't expect him to last as long as he did. He was pushing himself way too hard. Kirishima rubbed the back of his neck apologetically. Midoriya looks at his mentor nervously, who is shooting him a glare, reminding him to know when and how to push his limits. So much for plus ultra. All Might stops and looks behind. Hey, hey kid. Look alive now. We've only got three months left. Are you gonna give up after all this work? Wanna flush it all down the toilet and take it easy? Midoriya tries to crawl, using the last of his strength. You're overworked. The aim to pass, American dream plan was created with your body in mind. It was fine-tuned to ensure your progress was swift but manageable. Narrowing his eyes he continued which means, you haven't been sticking to it. You're overdoing things. That's going to have the opposite effect to what we want. I have to work harder, or I won't stand a chance against the other applicants. Trying to pull himself off the ground I don't just want to enter UA. I want to excel. I want. To be like you. He pushes himself upwards. I want. To be the greatest hero in the world. There are tears in his eyes, a sweat pours down his face. So I'll keep on trying. Until I've got what it takes to do that. The raw determination in his words hits everyone like a physical force. They're taken aback the ferocity of the gentle boy they know. His will and ambition were boundless. That is so manly. Kirishima had tears of his own. I wonder if I can persuade the boy to intern at my agency. His thinking is precise, and his vision broad what am I thinking. He is his successor. Endeavor growled, frustrated with his own traitorous thoughts. He is definitely the one Tashinori. Nana would have been proud. Gran Torino spoke quietly, but Tashinori could not have been any happier. His approval meant almost as much to him as his own master's. Blast that damn wannabe. Looking down on us. Like we're nothing. Bakugo let out some small explosives. Midoriya, I promise you, I will try and keep up with you, and it is only fair if I put in just as much effort as you do. It would be disgraceful to heroes both present and past to not give it my all. Ada had tears in his eyes as he said this. He could see his brother doing the same thing. All Might remembers the words that boy had spoken to him on that fateful day. Gotta hand it to the kid, he's given a lot of thought to the future. He transforms into his buff form. Picking Midoriya up by his suit, he says that fighting spirit's what I like about you, fanboy. It serves you well. I do get your concerns. That's it. Now is not the time to go and rush progress. Fear not. I can get you back on track. Leave it to this old man to adjust your plan. The sound of the autumn wind blowing is marred by the falling of the bronze leaves as All Might picks Midoriya up again. 
who protests, saying All Might is not that old. Ah oh, All Might. Toru can be heard sniffling. This was too cute. You're such a big all softy. Mina let out a giggle. Yeah, he's like a caring grandpa. Kaminari concludes. The teachers are chuckling at the children's antics, though they can agree, Midoriya does have a way to worm himself into their hearts. Him, looks like the problem child isn't only my problem child after all. Aizawa smiles a small, genuine smile. And suddenly, it was the morning of the exam. All Might steps out of a truck in a parking lot before hearing a bloodcurdling scream. In front of him is a huge pile of trash. On top of that small mountain of waste stands Midoriya, yelling his heart out. All Might's eyes widen a bit as the sun starts rising, kissing Midoriya's sweat-laden body. He's seen wearing no shirt, eyes pressed close, as if to let all the emotions he's feeling bursting out. Did you see that? Gyro asks Mina a bit awkwardly. A small blush was creeping up her face as her imagination started running wild. Mina gulped a bit. It was only a fraction of a second, but damn he looked like a fine boy. A grin was plastered on her face. Yuraka tried to look away from the boy beside her. His costume didn't reveal a lot, nor did the uniform, but given his abilities, it wasn't a long shot that he'd have a nice body. Sure, guys like Kirishima and Bakugo didn't mind showing off, but this, this was a different thing altogether. Pixie Bob's eyes widened. She licked her lips. Well, I am 18 at heart. Those back muscles. Kirishima whistled. Oh boy, he was going to have to seriously catch up. Hey, Midoriya, I never really asked, how much can you bench? Sada wasn't sure whether he wanted to know this or not. Not more than me. Bakugo heatedly snapped, but inside, he wasn't sure if that was true or not. All Might runs towards the beach, where the sun is still rising. His eyes widen at what he saw. Hey, hey, holy crap kid. The entire beach is clean spotless. The smooth waves are crashing against the white sand, the sun peeking from beyond the horizon. You even cleaned outside the area I told you to. Seriously, there's not one speck of trash left on this beach. His eyes rove over the entire area. He begins shaking in excitement. Only a few minutes to spare, but you exceeded my expectations. He still can't believe what he's seeing. Holy, stinking. S-U-P-E-R-C-R-A-P. -E he punctuates the last word by transforming instantly. Man, the entire beach. Within 10 months. Awesome. Amazed whispers rang throughout the room. The pros were as shocked as the students, the level of determination and dedication required to complete such a project was staggering. Their friend had single-handedly restored their most popular tourist spot in the city. It was amazing no matter how you looked at it. Izuku sways a bit before falling off the pile. All Might jumps in and effortlessly catches him. He smiles at his protege. Excellent work. Midoriya weakly smiles back, at least he tries to. I finished everything. All Might, I did it. Do you think I'm ready now? He trails off. All Might is impressed. Really impressed. He holds up his phone, showing Midoriya a picture. It's you, crying. Ten months ago. He explains. Look how far you've come. Such improvement. A shot of Izuku's body is shown. The sweat dripping off of his body glistened. His finely defined body was nothing to scoff at. Heart and shoulders, even pecs, abs that you could grate cheese on. His forearms were bigger than his biceps, which was incredible, since his bicep were well defined too. Not an ounce of fat could be seen. It was as if it was finely sculpted. Drool was dribbling off of the girl's chins as they took in the sheer beauty of this sculpture. Midnight smirked as she licked her lips. Oh my, so very, nice. All Might didn't know if he should be proud, or afraid for his student. Yuraka squeaked as her wide eyes drunk in every detail. Midoriya was a blushing mess, unable to form a single coherent word as all the attention was getting to him. Two simultaneous clicks were heard as Toru and Mina snapped the picture in front of them. Oh these are gonna go like hotcakes. Pixie Bob had stars in her eyes. Her head shot towards the pink-skinned girl sitting just below her. Hey, is that boy single? Mandalay had a scandalous look on her face. Restrain yourself, Pixie. He's way too young for you. Well, he's legal, and that's all that counts, doesn't it? Age is just a number. She replied airily, looking expectantly at the dumbfounded student. Who? Yeah. As far as I know he is. Izuku was almost catatonic. Jaira was squeaking periodically. Momo could not meet anyone's eyes. Hey, Midoriya. Sue croaked. Oh, uh, yeah. A suit Sue. He replied, a bit unsure. You're hot. Ribbit she said in a matter-of-fact way. Midoriya shrieked a bit, not noticing the possessive manner in which Yuraka wrapped her hands around him. Man, I want such a body. Why is it always the quiet ones? Kaminari moaned. Awesome my man. That is one crazy heck of a bod you got there. Kirishima flashed him a thumbs up. There's still a long road ahead of you before you can inherit my full power set. But it's starting to look like you can do it. Midoriya smiles waveringly at his own hands All Might. Do I deserve this? Are you sure? All Might is a bit startled. You put so much time and energy into helping me. He sniffles as tears start falling. How did I end up so lucky? All Might laughs a bit. Are you really worried about that after all these months? He gives him a pat on the back. It was your hard work that did this, not mine. Yeah dude. Don't beat yourself so much about it. What you did was really great. You deserve it. Zero encouraged the teen. He's right. It pains me to say this, but as much as I want to be a hero, I don't think I could have matched your dedication. You deserve everything and much more after all you've done. 
Ada had soft, genuine smile on him for the first time in days. Seeing his friend's trials and tribulations was slowly making him realize how pointless the hatred he was holding onto was. You rock dude, just saying. Gyro added. Yeah little man. Chin up. Present Mike couldn't help but get pumped up. Now, for your reward, Izuku Midoriya. All Might pulls off a strand of hair. Someone told me this once. There's a difference between being lucky and deserving. One's an action and the other a reward. Never get the two confused. Izuku looks at his mentor with awe. Take that to heart, young man. This gift. You earned it with your own valiant efforts. Izuku can't help but stare at the man in front of him. This was the first time he was being recognized. His efforts were being visible. He took on a hard glint in his eyes. Humph. For a second there you actually sounded wise. How quaint. Endeavor snorted derisively. What's that supposed to mean? The top two heroes glared at each other. That is a good lesson. One that we must always keep in our hearts. It shows that we are conscious of our efforts. Nezu said smiling all the while. And so, I held out my weak, corkless hands and grabbed the future. All Might holds out the hair he had plucked out earlier, and in a serious tone says, Eat this. Midoriya has a weird look on his face, as he tries to comprehend what he said. To inherit my power you have to swallow some of my DNA that's how it works. All Might explained a bit sheepishly. Black, a hair. Seriously, you gave him your hair, All Might. Urg. Mina was feeling a bit sick. Suo that explains why you went a bit green. Even the ever frank Su was having trouble digesting that fact. Hey, from what I've seen, the kid has a quirk. That means. Ragdoll let her words hang in the air, before disgusted noises filled the room. This is dark, Midoriya, even for me. Takoyami made a weird gagging noise. Todoroki looked away, not. Wanting to make his opinion known. Bakugo on the other hand was laughing his head off. Midoriya gave him a deadpan look, before just shaking himself to rid those feelings and looked at the screen. Wait a minute. You're saying that any miserable idiot on the streets could come up and bite you and they'd have your power. Endeavor roared. Everyone looked to the blonde hero for an answer. Even Midoriya was curious, they'd never broach that subject. No, not at all. Two reasons. One, he pointed towards Midoriya. It's not mine to give anymore. It's his. It was a sudden reminder to the fact that Midoriya now possessed All Might's quirk. And two, it has to be consciously and willingly given. It cannot be stolen or forcibly taken even by that son of a. Endeavor grunted, somewhat satisfied by that response. Midoriya and the students sighed in relief. It would not do to lose such a power accidentally. It's as 8.40am and Midoriya is running towards the gates of UA. Academy's entrance exam location. Panting he speaks to himself. I made it just in time. I was so worried about missing the exam that I didn't get a chance to test out my new power. He remembers the traumatizing experience of having to eat All Might's hair. He covers his mouth. I may have swallowed that hair, but I don't feel like anything great is happening to me. His train of thought is broken by Bekugo approaching. Stupid Deku. Turning around he sees him approaching, wearing their school's uniform. He rudely threatens him to get out of his way. Midoriya flails around a bit, trying to get out of the blonde's way and calm him down. Bakugo just walks right past him. A few examinees recognize him as the kid who fought off the sludge villain. Izuku recollects that Bakugo didn't actually antagonize him since that day. He'd left him alone. He sighed with relief, shoulders sagging. I guess that I was just scared out of habit. Didn't get a chance to test his quirk. Does that mean? A few heads turn towards Midoriya. Your Raka plucked up the courage to ask it. Deku, does that mean it was? Your first time. She whispered quietly. At receiving a hesitant nod, her eyes teared up. The first time he'd used his quirk. Huh, guess can't ask him to lay off of him too much now. Hiroshima mumbled. The teachers however were a bit concerned. It is really unhealthy to have developed such an ingrained fear. At such a young age too. Chiyo's eyes narrowed. This is going to take longer than we anticipated. Aizawa groaned. Izuku brought himself out of his stupor. But I'm not defenseless anymore. He takes a staggering step towards the door. Thanks to All Might, I'm actually going to be a hero. As soon as he takes the first step, he trips, on his own feet too. Or, I'll just die. Izuku rubs his neck in embarrassment. He remembers that moment pretty well. PFFT. Hey ha ha. I'm sorry, I know you're nervous and all, but, seriously. Gyro breaks into barely restrained laughter. Many people follow suit, chuckling at the behavior of the young boy. He suddenly stops midair. He's floating. A small giggle is heard as a voice asks him if he's okay. He starts trying to run as the person a brown-haired girl. Picks him up and sets him straight, holding her hands together to cancel the effects. I stopped you with my quirk. I'm sorry I didn't ask first. But, I figured you wouldn't mind me catching you. She said with a smile on her face. She was dressed in a uniform like all others. She wore a dark brown jacket, along with a scarf around her neck. She had low bob-cut hair, with two small bangs hanging, nicely framing her face. She had an almost semi-permanent blush on her pale complexion. U-R-A-R-A-K-A. The class cheered at the appearance of their friend. Yuraka beamed at them, also remembering that day. She suddenly starts rambling, not letting Midoriya get. A word in edgewise. Isn't this all like YA nerve-wracking? Not that she needed to, Midoriya started freaking out almost instantly. Well, guess I'll see you inside. Bye. And with that she was off. Midoriya stood silently at his spot, frozen. 
One thought ran through his head as a blush crept up to his face. Whoa, I just talked to a girl. The words didn't actually talk flashed on the screen. With that he started letting off a weird, creepy sort of ecstatic laugh. Sheesh. Man, did you never talk to a girl? I mean, you went to school like the rest of us, didn't you? Kaminari asked amidst the laughter Midoriya's antics had initiated. He blushed a bit before answering. I, who, never had a chance to talk to girls before I came to UA. The only people who talked to me were the ones who wanted something from me, or, or tried to bully me. I was avoided by people because I was quirkless. Kakin didn't really help by driving anyone off. Honestly, Yuraka was my first friend since I was four years old. Nobody wanted to hang around a loser. His eyes were shadowed by the end of this speech. The last sentence was barely whispered, but it was heard by everyone. Yuraka latched onto him in a hug. No words were said. She'd be there for him, even if everyone else left. Damn protocol. I want to hug him too. Ragdoll moaned along with Pixie Bob. It didn't sit well seeing such a sweet person being sad and friendless. Bakugo looked away, guiltily. He had consciously isolated Izuku away from his peers for nigh over a decade. He couldn't say anything to make him feel better. As long as I'm alive, you will never have to worry about this again. Ida said with a sharp glint in his eyes. Todoroki put a hand on Midoriya, silently sending a message. He's had such a rough time. Shinsu thought to himself. We've got you man. You will never be lonely again. Isn't that right guys? Hiroshima rallied the group. Cheers of agreement rang throughout the hall. Kaminari cheered the loudest, feeling really sorry for bringing such a subject on. All Might looked with sad eyes towards his protege. My boy, you have such great friends. Cherish them. You'll need all their support before the end. Endeavor looked away. His own personality did him no favors, and while he always shook them away, he craved company too. It was a really crappy feeling. Loneliness was nothing to be scoffed at. The hero course exam orientation begins, with present Mike at the podium. What's up UA? Candidates. Thanks for tuning in to me, the school DJ. He began with excess flair. Blowing his arms apart come on and lemme hear ya. He held a hand behind his ear, only to be met with complete silence. Aizawa had a grin plastered on his face. He absolutely loved whenever his friend embarrassed himself. That wasn't very nice. You guys could have at least said something. Present Mike put on something akin to a pout. Sorry Mr. Yamada, but we were really winded up that day. Mina tried to explain their behavior. W, well, we can try and make up for it now. I guess, Midoriya meekly suggested. Y-A-H-H-H, was the response of the class, sans Bakugo, Todoroki and Shinsu. Keeping it mellow, huh? Well, let's get to how this exam will go down. With a grand flourish and a falsetto voice, he says are you ready? Y-A-H-H-H, the students began raucous cheering. Izuku instantly starts fanboying over him. O-H-M-Y-G-O-D it's the voice hero, present Mike. So cool. He gasps I listen to his radio show every day. Of the week. It's also crazy nuts that all the UA teachers are pro heroes. Will you shut up? Back Hugo mutters. O-H-H-Y-A-H-H-H. Thank you little listener. It's because of fans like you that our art can survive. Present Mike flashes a thumbs up to Midoriya. He goes on to describe the battle simulation in detail. Students are assigned different battle centers from a through G. Bakugo concludes that it's to split them up so that they can't work with their friends. Midoriya and Bakugo have consecutive examinee numbers but different centers. Damn. I was really looking forward to crushing you. Well, that probably worked out for the best, huh? Ajiro scratched his cheek. How can one person be so confrontational? Wanna say something to my face? How? There were three types of faux villains, each one having a different point value, depending on their level of difficulty. A video game setting is shown, in which present Mike fights and defeats the robots to rack up the points, explaining the exam. But check it. Keep it all heroic, attacking other examinees is a big no-no. May scratches her head in confusion. Pointing towards Bakugo, she says then how is this guy even in here? She asks in her cavalier attitude. Bakugo just emits a low growl, knowing full well, he couldn't attack her from this far away without being stopped midway. The proceedings are interrupted by an examinee asking a question. The student in question points out the extra villain depicted in the sheet. With all respect, if his is an error on official UA materials, it is shameful. The paper reveals the boy to be none other than Tenya Ida. Ida. The class cheered once again at another one of their ranks making an appearance. Come on man, geez, take a break class rep. Gyro smirked. I agree, you need to lighten up Ida. Hero. Sue nodded sagely. But I can't, it was a matter of the schools as well as my own pride at being meticulous for the best institute in the country. And he was cut off by Shinsu. Hey, Ida. Yes Shinsu he was taken in by his quirk. Lighten up. He ordered, trading a soft smile with the frog quirk user. He let go of the boy after a couple of moments, but it seemed to have done the trick. Swiftly turning back, he points out Midoriya. You with the unkempt hair. You've been muttering this entire time. Stop that. His glare was intense. If you can't bother to take this seriously, leave. You're distracting the rest of us. Izuku quietly apologizes. I know I've said this before but... I really am sorry Midoriya. I was quick to judge you. It wasn't a very heroic thing to do. Ida bowed his head in shame. Midoriya waved his apology away. He had let it go ages ago. 
There was no need to dig up past wounds. Present Mike explains the Zero P foe villain. He says that it's basically an obstacle, which should be avoided. It's not like it can't be destroyed, it's just that there's no point. I get it, so they're kinda like traps you have to get around in games. This whole thing is like a video game. Two students converse amongst each other. We wanted you to be able to easily understand it and subconsciously follow the rules. That way you could focus on the exam. Nezu explained. The class slowly nodded, understanding the concept behind the exam. Two, Mr. Mike, was it necessary to? Two, downplay the zero P, Toru asked with some trepidation. Of course, little listener. Otherwise, how would I fulfill my yearly quota of fun? At his reply, everyone looked at the proher with a look that says are you stupid? Hey, Aizawa set me an annual quota of fun. It seemed cool at the time. He trailed off. Present Mike wraps up the presentation with a quote from Napoleon Bonaparte. Demimimhim. Now that's a tasty soundbite. Get ready to go beyond. Let's hear a plus ultra. He finished with a final flourish. Good luck. Hope you practiced hitting more than just books. Plus ULTRAAA every student and surprisingly some of the pros too, remembering the motto of their alma mater. Hem, I forgot how good you could be with a mic, mic. Ectoplasm jabbed, not realizing the irony in his words. The scene shifts to the closed gates of Battle Center B. Everyone silently marvels the sheer size of the monstrous gate. Whoa, this is it. Time to put 10 months of training with All Might to the test. Izuku takes a deep breath. Time to give it my all. He starts shivering uncontrollably. I will become a hero. Just like I always dreamed. I won't let myself down. He slaps his face to psyche himself up. And on that note, the end credits start playing. As the ending concluded and Ms. Oracle sat meditating, there was complete silence in the room, except the fidgeting of two worried one-for-all wielders. Oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god. A bead of sweat poured off of his shirt. They know. And they're going to want to ask questions. How do I answer them? Or go away, and let All Might deal with my problems. He sighed, he knew that it was inevitable, but he wanted to stall it. As he walked up to his mentor, determining the best course of action to appropriately answer their questions. Before he could reach it, though, he was accosted by a bunch of students. Okay, Midori they took a collective breath. We've got a lot to talk about, haven't we? Aizawa turned towards the deflated symbol of peace, dead set on getting his questions answered. 